This is a production of Hockey Night in Oswego. Only on WTOP. Hello and welcome to tonight's non-conference exhibition matchup featuring the Oswego State Lakers and the Nazareth Golden Flyers. Live from the Morano Campus Center, I'm Michael Moran. Alongside me is Patrick Machado and Zachary Gase. We got a lot of hockey to cover here, but let's take a step back and let's look at Oswego's last win over the Carlton Place Pays. A monstrous win, 9-1. to one. Uh, The game summary overall, nine goals for the Oswego Lakers. Shots are goal, though, 38-20 to 20 for Carl for Oswego, power play. You only see the one to six that does come because of the applied pressure from, from the power play that set up the goal. The, there was a lot of chippiness throughout the game along with the 35 faceoff one for Oswego. That added to the offensive pressure overall for the whole game. Yeah, and the, something that you're going to see as we move forward throughout this pre-show is that one for six power play, like you're gonna see here. Derek Brown gets the goal from the pass from Tyler Curry, but that was coming off of a power play that was recently killed off, but the four check of the Oswego State Lakers was able to keep some tired players out there to capitalize for them. Here you're seeing some more goals from that play, a second opportunity in front of goal. He couldn't handle the rebound. Then you saw that go on the rush, and then a turnover in front Goes right in, right in. And another play here, one a board battle down low. Quick set it to that man who was streaking down the wing. And they're able to score there. There is Charlie Pelnick. And here's the final hat trick goal. You see Derek Brown there on the right faceoff circle. He was there for a second and a half before he scored. But another storyline during that game, physicality. And it really boiled over in the second period with probably one of the biggest fights that I have seen here in my time in Oswego. It was Travis Broman that got into a brawl, got his helmet ripped off in that fight. No supplementary discipline was handled out as a result of that. I was a little bit surprised, but it is an exhibition game, so no, too early in the season to hand out suspensions. Yeah, you would think both of the leagues would maybe hand out anything for both of the players there. You see on the video, as you can see, ripped off and multiple other uh, scrums between the players back. So now we're going to jump now to Nazareth here. We're going to take a look at take a look at their live set, take a look at their stats from last year. What kind of comes out to you guys here? What do you seems to be their strong suit? Um, I'd have to say their strong suit right now is their goals per game and their goals against average. It's not the best goals against average that you would see, but a 2.5 is not too shabby. Three goals a game. One cause for concern though. Both special teams, 80% conversion rate on the penalty kill and just under 17% for the power play. Yeah, That's a unit that needs to step up. Pat, you really don't like to see 80% on the penalty kill. That's You're allowing your opponent to get multiple opportunities on the power play, and special teams are such a key factor nowadays between games. Now, fortunately for the Nazareth Golden Flyers, they return both of their goalie and some of their top goal scorers, David Pulowski with 10 markers on the year, and J.R. Wojciechowski with 15 helpers for the 42nd scoring in the national rankings for Division Three. The big thing is their defensive core was 21st in scoring, along with uh, the pen with uh, 51st in the penalty kill and 52nd for the power play. Now Oswego State moving into tonight's matchup, they need to exploit that penalty kill. Like we said, one for six on the stat line, but their pen their power play was able to keep them in their own zone, even towards as the penalty expired. So you keep the same players out on the ice, you got some tired players, you can exploit that, spread the zone out a little bit, and exploit every single lane that you have on the ice for an easy goal. Yeah, if you wear down that defensive core, and that's where opportunities come from, Pat. And moving forward into today's matchup, one key thing, Anthony Passero, Josh Zizek, scratched from today's game along with Tanner Spink and Carson Vance. Um, I don't think they're scratched for anything other than to give some of the younger players more time on the ice, because we know what they look like. Of course, you see, uh, you see, uh and after reaching now the NCAA tournament, being in on a solid offense here, the Oswego State Lakers are looking to make an even deeper run, this time on an improved goalie situation here. We're going to see what Ed Gosick has planned here when we come back. You're watching Hockey Night in Oswego.
Welcome back to Hockey Night in Oswego on WTOP 10. I'm Michael Moran. Alongside me is Patrick Machado, Zachary Gase. And we're going to get into this goalie situation a little bit. We know David Richet wasn't at the press conference this year or last year. We know that Ed Gosick said he wanted to ride the hot hand here. And we're going to uh, take a look at what Ed Gosick had to say on the situation. You would prefer and need a goalie that's over 93 save percentage. Both of our goalies we like, have confidence in, but they weren't there. Well, bottom line is they need to be better. But our team defense needs to be better. You hear now, those words? These uh, expedition games, they could be crucial here, trying to figure out who you want to go for in this. So do you think that he's actually going to have patience with this goalie position? I don't think he will. And quite frankly, at the higher levels of the game, a coach and player relationship is more collaborative than a dictatorship. So with 14 seniors on the roster, it's their last chance to win some hardware here at Oswego State. So they have to make the moves that are going to put the team first and W's first. Yeah, this is definitely going to be at a crucial season going forward for Ed Gozik and his goalie situation. He knows going forward, as you see, here's a split screen. Richard, 22 goal games played last year, but it goals against average 2.21. That's a little big, Pat. Yeah, no, especially after the first season that David Richet was here, when he put up stellar numbers that caused waves throughout the entire D3 hockey world. You see that, a 1.48 goals against average and a .934 save percentage in 19 games played. That is absolutely spectacular. And he pretty much was ridden that entire season because of his play. Yes, of course. That, but that 93%, that that's what Ed Gozik wants. He wants that 93 above. And as you see, David Richet from that last game, he didn't really get tested much. The goaltender that got tested a lot was uh, Steven Kozakowski. And even though he's a sophomore and probably going to be third string on the depth chart, he really impressed me last Saturday night. Yeah, he did a great job against Carlton Place, especially when he popped in and made those crucial saves on those breaks. And so now they need to make a deep run if they want to have a nice little goalie situation going on here. So we have Luke Owens to tell us how realistic these expectations can be if the goalie situation is right. Thanks, guys. And one thing that really stuck out to me from Coach Ed Gosick's preseason press conference was his need for a goaltender to be over that 930 save percentage mark. And why is that number so important? You look at the Final Four last season in NCAA Division III ice hockey, all four goaltenders were over that 930 mark. Case in point, Devin McDonald, the SUNY Geneseo All-World National Player of the Year last year, finished with a 940 save percentage. Liam LaSalle, the goaltender from Hobart that would eventually eliminate Oswego from the tournament on its home ice, a 935 save percentage last year. We know the fireworks that this Oswego State offense has, but when it comes to chasing a championship and a national championship, it boils down to goaltending. They have to get either David Richet over that 930 mark or Cedric Hansen for them to be successful this season. Back to you guys. Thank you, Luke. And this is going to be a very interesting situation if you're Oswego. But when we come back, we're going to have a history between Nazareth and Oswego and what a win would mean for both teams here. You're watching Hockey Night in Oswego. And welcome back to Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Morano alongside me, Patrick Machado and Zach Gase. And we're going to take a look here at the matchups here. History has been on Oswego's side as of late. So if we take a look here, what do you guys really see from these past uh, matchups? Yeah, these teams have faced off 11 times in program history. Oswego State leads the series 8-2 with a 5-0 undefeated record at home. Yeah, the big thing too also the neutral play they played last season in Skinny Atlas, New York. Uh, that was a W, the 3-0 win. But as you see, the last time they lost was back in 2016-17 with a 3-0 loss. Yeah, and you take a look at that other loss, the 2015-16. That year wasn't as strong as previous Laker teams have been. So, uh, and then you see that momentum being ridden into next year. But Oswego State has controlled as of late. You mentioned that charity game last January in Skinny Atlas. Oswego State outscoring Nazareth by a 38 to 13 in the all-time series. That comes from that, we talked about that offensive uh, momentum that they got 
especially the momentum you talked about after the 17 and 16 season. And of course, there is a little bit of personal pride on the line as we take a look at the season stats from last year. Oswego State outscoring the Nazareth Golden Flyers 3.8 goals per game to Nazareth's 2.9. Uh, Swigo State much more lethal on the power play. At one time, they were the number one power play in the nation. Yeah, that power play is really improved compared to uh, the Vats with Gold Flyers. Along with, you saw that save percentage. The save percentage was much higher for Nazareth than Oswego. Yeah, so if Oswego State, excuse me, if Nazareth can keep up that goaltending from last year, Oswego State might have to be more crafty with their chances as opposed to just ripping them on goal from the outside in the point. Yes, correct. So now Oswego is going to open up the season with five conference straight, uh, straight conference games. Nazareth looking for their first win on, on the road against Oswego. What, is a, what does a win really mean for both of these teams? How important are they? Well, a win is crucial um, for Oswego State. Cortland, um, they face Cortland in their first conference game, but that's the big one, November 8th and November 9th. That is whiteout weekend with the more important of the two, the Plattsburgh rivalry game being on Friday. So you're playing for pride, it, which is going to set the tone for the rest of your season. Exactly, and then you look, continuing that schedule, Potsdam the following night, then Brockport and Geneseo. Of course, we know Geneseo, first in Sudiax last year in the conference, and of course, going to the Frozen Four along with Oswego. Now, Geneseo, moving forward, is going to have a little bit of a rough time in goal. The de goaltender from last year, Devin McDonald, is no longer on the team, but moving forward to the Nazareth Golden Flyers, it's their first game of the year. This is the first exhibition they've played. They did not have the benefit of playing last week like Oswego did. So Oswego is going to be able to come out of the gate a lot stronger. And for Nazareth, it's your first game. You have to set a good tone for the season. Of course, you got to look at the chemistry too. Pat, if you establish that chemistry between your four lines and your D pairs, you'll eventually get uh, multiple opportunities. So, important. so look for both coaches tonight, both from Oswego State and George Roll, the former Oswego State coach, to juggle their lines a lot tonight to try to experiment with their chemistry. It is an exhibition game. They have nothing to lose other than, like I said, for personal pride for both teams. Well, coming up after the break here, Pat and Zach are going to give us our players to watch for today. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Hockey Night in Oswego. Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Morano. Alongside me, Patrick Machado, Zach Gase, and Pat, we're going to start with you. Who are some players to watch for in this matchup? Well, for Nazareth, I'm going to go with number 13, who's going to play on the second line center, Brian Miller. Now, as you see here, he is the point leader among returners. He's a senior with five goals, 12 assists, and 17 points on last year. But what's going to be interesting to watch, and we'll be a key factor on how effective he is tonight is his penalty minutes. It was a little high, not in the team lead in penalty minutes, but he does have 22 on the year. So he should be very effective on that Nazareth Golden Flyers scoring if he can stay out of the box. Now moving on to Oswego, I'm going to go with the alternate captain this year, number two, Carter Allen. Last game he got a goal, two assists and three points. His offensive production as a defenseman is on an uptrend overall from his first year in Oswego State to now. And he's expected to fill Devin Campbell's role as an anchor on the blue line. Kind of a defensive-minded defenseman, but not afraid to jump in on the rush when he has an opportunity to. Those are good, good selections, Pat. I'm going to move into my players to watch. First for Nathras, Owen Coons. Only six points last season, but he was. He is now the captain, along with of course, we talked about, but the whole thing behind George Roll, he wanted to get a vocal captain. Of course, he's a senior, so you get that upperclassman who knows what he's doing, but it's kind of unusual. Usually, Pat, you see a coach pick someone that has a lot of scoring, effective on the point board. That, that's the opposite for Coons. He's more of a defensive-minded player. Now, for Oswego, Derek Brown, last game, three goals. We talked about that, that his first career hat trick. He tied the first, the first, uh, his first career hat trick. But last season, he was only 10th overall in stats for the whole team individually. He got one on the power play off of that offensive pressure last game, of course. And now this game, he's going to be centering the new freshman 
uh, DeCarlo. Yeah, and Alex DeCarlo has drawn penalties, so look for the power play to get a lot of opportunities. Of course. All right, so now we're going to toss it over to the press box. Luke Owens and Matt Watlin with their keys to the game. Thank you, Mike, and welcome to the Steve Levy Press Box. Matt Walling here, joined alongside Luke Owens. Now, Luke, Nazareth, they're a stout, defensive-minded team. What do they need to do for their keys to the game? Well, Nazareth, first, they want to score first, and they want to keep that lead throughout the first period. Last season, they were 10-2-1 when leading after the first period, but just 1-7-3 and when trailing. So that's going to be my first key for Nazareth. Nazareth, and second is play physical. You know Oswego State's going to want to come out and run and go, but Nazareth, you want to slow down the pace, use that defense, and make big plays. And third, Help out your goaltender. There's going to be a lot of action in front of the net. Oswego loves those second and third opportunities. You've got to clear the pucks out to the sideboards. Ryan, talking about those second and third opportunities for Oswego State, switching them now. Derek Brown loves him some second and third line chances. He's, he's that depth guy in Oswego State. They've got a, a lot of depth scoring. I mean, he was on the third line putting up three goals. What do they What do they need to do to get the W? Yeah, Oswego State's keys to the game. First is to get Mike Gillespie going, one of those guys that doesn't really get lost in the shuffle, but he was scratched in that first ex exhibition game. He's especially lethal on that power play unit, so let him go to work. And second is find your leader. Both Pacero and Zizek scratched tonight, so Carter Allen most likely going to be the voice of this team. And third, Keep the foot on the gas. You know, this team put up nine goals in that first exhibition game, but you want to keep your foot on the gas and end this preseason stretch strong. Yeah, and you put up those nine goals against a really good goaltender. In talking to Colton Place, they were saying that their goaltender is a D1 guy, going from Mott, a guy that could possibly play in the NHL. Yeah, and Oswego State tagged him nine times, and Derek Brown obviously was the star of that team, but Oswego State's just so deep with all their forwards, also defensemen that can score the puck, so it's going to be interesting to see if they can come out as strong against an actual Division Three opponent. Yeah, we've got about 7.20 to go left until Puck Drop. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, Puck Drop here, Lakers Golden Flyers on WTOP 10. Hello and welcome back to the Murano Campus Ice Arena. Matt Walling here, joined alongside Luke Owens for game two of an exhibition slate for Oswego State as they take on the Nazareth College Golden Flyers. Of course, you have the ceremonial Puck Drop, our uh, hometown hero award. And for the Lakers, looking to get something going here. Obviously, win last week 9-1. In dominant fashion, but still, Coach Whitelaw wanted to see more from his team. Yeah, and tonight's going to be an interesting test for us, Oswego State team. This Nazareth team, very strong, very physical, and honestly, like Whitelaw and Gosick both said, this is a Division Three hockey team. Carlton Place, they have the D1 commits, they have a ton of talent, but these are grown men that Oswego State will be going up against tonight. So a big test as their final matchup before they take on Cortland next weekend to begin SUNY at Cloy. Yeah, and one thing that Whitelaw earlier in the week said to me is he's saying, look, we want our goaltenders to be better. We're a little nitpicky with it, but our, our goaltenders can do a better job kicking off those rebounds into the corners, and I think that's what's so important. You look at some of the best goaltenders, not only in D3, but in the NHL as well, all their rebounds go to the boards and cleared away from the danger zone. And I think that's something that we'll have to see from David Riche. He gets to start in that for the first period tonight, and Kind of those saves down the stretch last year, you mentioned kicking him to the corner. He kind of kicked himself a little bit after those games, saying, you know, I could have made better saves. I could have been better for my team. Riche knows how much pressure is on him this year, and I think he's embracing it going into his final year in between the pipes. Yeah, now looking at Nazareth, last year they, they lost their top two point scorers in David Pulowski and J.R. Wojciechowski, excuse me. 25 points, Pulowski led the team in goals, and the puck is dropped here. And it's Oswego State Molinaro cutting into his own shot. Saved by Tilford as it goes behind the net. Lakers flying to start early on here. As it's Tyler Curry at the point. Looking back for Carter Allen. Shot off a leg and it looked like it was Molinaro in front. And he's slow to get up as Nazareth looks to clear. A stretch pass up and fluttered in. And handled well by, ba by Alberga. But Sullivan will pick it up. Oswego State recoiling here in their own end. It's Carter Allen. Up the gut for Jody Sullivan. Dumps it in for Fletcher, the, the sophomore now on this top line centering in the absence of Josh Zizek. Back for the point, Jody Sullivan misses it, but a good job by Allen to pick it up. Center point, Curry. Back, over, back out in front, Molinaro trickles down back. Back out in front, shot, goes wide, Sullivan again, scores! Jody Sullivan at the doorstep, and the Lakers take a one goal lead. What a great job by Jody Sullivan there, he stayed. He stayed on us right in front of that. He was actually on his knees when this puck went in. You'll see on the replay here, Sullivan battling, 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 gets shoved down from behind, still finds the back of the net. And that top line, a little bit of a question mark coming into this matchup. But Jody Sullivan hammers one home, the alternate captain. one nothing, less than a minute into this one. Jody Sullivan put up two points last week, two assists against Carlton Blaze. And he's a guy that you expect to see in front of the net. That's what Gozik really wants, to have that gritty presence in the crease. And that's what he provides here with about 9.08 
left in this first, or 1908, excuse me, left in this first period. Lakers take an early 1-0 lead, and they definitely have the legs as Nazareth College looks to make something happen here. Nazareth playing their first exhibition game of the season. That's why, that might be why they look a little slow. Yeah, as the Lakers all wants, on them. Excuse me, Matt, push the tempo early line. You see Max Novik now in. Another one of those defenders, McMillan. These guys are great passing defensemen. Also gonna wanna put the puck in the net. Oswego State controlling every aspect of this game early on. Ryan Bunka on the second line of the defenseman has a couple of scratches here for the Lakers, include Pissarro, Spink, and Zizek, three forwards. Bunka an offensive, de offensive defenseman, so he might have no trouble here as he gets in behind the crease trying to make something happen. And the clear is Nazareth. They won't be able to do so. Good play by Emerson to knock it in momentarily. And they've got a 2-1. Bad change for the Lakers. Cutting in is Nazareth. Across the crease and can't get a stick on it is Justin Miller. A good deep defensive effort by the Lakers as Travis Broman looks to break out. Up to Pelnick and he'll flutter it in as Broman gets to work on the forecheck. Lays the body hard and the puck is cleared out by Nazareth. It's Jackson Shanley with it now. Hesitates, shot blocked and Brown picks it up in his own end. Looking for a clear to Broman, can't get it there. And they battle along again, Solo knocking his man down. Great job by Solo on his first shift here, the defenseman on that third pairing with Charlie Pelnick. Great job first breaking up that two on one and now a good job to clear the zone. Solo just clearing it to the opposing blue line as Naz Nazareth looks to reset. And it's James McDonald, the captain, cutting in. Shot saved by Riche and no rebound there. Yeah, we talked about Riche. They don't want to give up those big juicy re rebounds in front and that was a good rush by Nazareth. They kind of want to show off their offense early on. Riche did a good job keeping that into the body, not allowing a rebound opportunity, but for Nazareth, really no opportunity anyways, with only really the initial shot, no one else there to clean it up if there was a rebound. And for Nazareth, when you have a two-on-two -two like that, good job keeping it simple, not doing anything pretty, just getting on net as Joey Scorpio exits the zone. And he's got some speed, no one else with him, so we'll dump it in. He's hit hard on the follow-up. Looks like his head got hit into the boards, but he's okay as Nazareth looks to clear. They'll get it out to the half ball for Jackson Shanley. Stretch pass over, misses James McDonald. And Tyler Curry will scoop it back up for the Lakers. Yeah, Nazareth trying to find those stretch passes. Oswego so State, you know their defensemen like to play up. So trying to find those holes within the zone. Most certainly, Luke. And for the Lakers, definitely got the legs in front of them as Carter Allen just mishandles it, but he'll throw it in for Kirkby. Or LeBlanc, excuse me. Nazareth looking to exit the zone. They do so momentarily as LeBlanc is back on the puck. And he'll find Scorpio, Kirkby trying to stay on side, and they do. LeBlanc in on the forecheck as the rest of the Lakers go off for a line change. And Nazareth looking to exit the zone, and they do. Yeah, you mentioned how Swigo State, they're gonna walk up as Carter Allen lays the boomstick there, but these, these forwards are gonna want a forecheck, and it looks like that's gonna be a penalty, a penalty Carter Allen. Maybe an interference call as we wait the official call. But for the Lakers, you're kind of worried with all these stretch passes for Nazareth. You've got to make sure you're staying back because on these stretch passes, and they call it an interference on Card Allen, these stretch passes make it so difficult to defend. You get a two on one the other way, a lot of speed and a lot of space for Nazareth. Yeah, and talking to Coach Whitelaw earlier this week, he said, you know, we are nitpicky about our defense, but it does need to be better. And those are those situations. When you have Carter Allen and Tyler Curry, two of your veteran defensive players, they've got to know when to get back and when to push up. And they've made a couple of mistakes early on, and now Carter Allen in the box. 6.30 left to go, or 16.30 left to go in this first period as Nazareth sets up shot for their first power play. Back out, shot, save, rebound out in front, and they'll slow things down for Nazareth. Back down low at the half ball. Back up for Kubara. Down low for McDonald. Looks like he misses it. Now they got two on one the other way. Molinaro up and over. Cuts in and can't get much there. Once again, I'll Max Novick on that one, excuse me. And Nazareth looking to go the other way, three on two. Just staying on side. They'll cut behind the net. Back in shot goes wide. Back to the point for Alberga, or Kubara, excuse me. Back over to Kubara again. Back over to left point. Back down low at the half wall. So it's Falso with it. Falso calling for it in the center, but Nazareth keeping to the outside as Falso picks up behind the net. Shot whiffed on it, and the Lakers look to clear the zone, and they do. And it actually goes into the Nazareth bench loop. Really good job by Jody Sullivan there. Kind of stayed honest right in the middle there. If he had cheated up, Nazareth might have had a chance for kind of a backdoor pass, while unable to get through. So good shift there by Jody Sullivan. He's really looked impressive early on. We mentioned two of the Lakers captains out. Now it's just Sullivan and, and Carter Allen. Obviously Carter Allen in the box right now, but Jody Sullivan's really stepped up early on in this first period. 55 seconds to go in this power play for Nazareth as they look to get another shot on the board. Holding is Pryor. He'll wait and get it back over to Antonini. Anthony's shot goes wide, and McDonald picks it up. 
Now back over to Mendezun. Mendezun fires it back in for Falso by the net, and he'll cut out back over to Mendezun. Mendezun holds and fires it back over to McDonald, right nearby, and he'll try to fire it and can't do so. As Solo gets the clear, and it'll go the length of the ice. Now 25 seconds left to go in this power play. Great job by the Lakers. They really haven't allowed too many shots on goal in front of Riche. They've done a good job clearing out their defensive zone. And really not many opportunities so far for Naz. We'll see if they can get something going in these last 20 seconds. Antonini enters the zone for Nazareth. Not much help there, so he'll go to work along the boards. Back out to Shanley. Back over to the point. Tucks it back in from, excuse me, for Mendezum for Antonini, but he can't get much going there as this power play will expire for Nazareth. Carter Allen comes out of the box. Lakers can't get out of their own zone, though, and it's Antonucci playing the body. A good job by him, the sophomore, entering this lineup as the extra defenseman, and Kirkby will pick it up. He's got some space three on three. Holds up, a little spin move to get behind the net, and he'll hold up and wait for the Lakers to step shot. Back up for Antonucci. Holds, can't and handle it, and it's Kirkby. Firing in for Scorpio and LeBlanc in on the forecheck. The way the Lakers use the boards is just so impressive. They dump, dump it down, and you know Scorpio, Bunka, Kirkby, guys like that are just so willing to go down there and get gritty and try to create those opportunities in front of the net. A lot of speed on those forwards as well, being able to get those uh, those pucks that they dump in as the Lakers look to ice the puck. And it'll be an icing here. 15.55, 13.55, excuse me, left to go in this first period. Lakers lead 1-0, but unofficially on the shot totals, it's 2-1 in favor of Oswego. So we saw a lot of action those first couple of shifts, but since then it's kind of simmered down. Yeah, it has. And one guy I've been keeping my eye on for this Oswego State team is Tyler Antonucci. He's a sophomore. He's the extra skater, the extra defenseman for Lakers tonight, trying to kind of earn his playing time. More of an offensive-minded defenseman. Didn't play a lot last year, but he's a guy that was highly touted coming in as Risha uses the glove there. Yeah, makes the save on Sean Hallis. He missed his junior year. Uh, or was injured in his first game, so missed all of his junior year. And he's a big, stout, strong defenseman at six foot two, 200 pounds, the senior. Yeah, that's a big theme for this Nazareth team. They're big, they're strong, they're willing to block shots, and a lot of them have those strong, heavy shots from the point. Look for them to get something going, even off of a faceoff. Try to get some traffic in front of the net with those big bodies. And that's why Oswego State looks to get aggressive as Roman up at the blue line before that faceoff even ends. And the Lakers maintain possession. McMillan with it over to Novick. Novick firing a cross ice pass, can't get it there. But eventually the Lakers will continue with it up the ice. Shot blocked in front, and it looks like it's Brown picking up the puck. Body along the boards, a little boards battle here. Nazareth trying to pry it away. Lakers as well as Broman sitting there looking for it to score it out. Still there, but it's trying to get moved around. It's Brown, and it looks like it's also DiCarlo, the freshman on it. McMillan gets it back at the shot, point. Just goes wide here for McMillan in his second game of this exhibition series. Great job by McMillan there, getting that shot low. That's where those rebound opportunities come from when it kicks off the pad. Luckily for Nazareth, good job getting it into the corner, as we mentioned before. Looking for a pass to exit is Nazareth, but they can't do so. And it's DiCarlo harassing his man to try to get the puck. All the way around, McMillan can't keep it in, but Max Novick there to pick it up at his own blue line. Both teams go off for a line change, and Novick looking to make the Nazareth College pay. Fletcher with it now in the slot. Shot just blocked into the corner boards, and Fletcher will go in on that four check there, two on three. Sullivan picking it up, cutting to the slot, and waiting for Pelnick. Shot save, rebound out in front. Jody Sullivan looking for the rebound, but it's covered up by Tilford. Boy, this top line for Oswego State has come out. They've been aggressive. Jody Sullivan, also Colton Fletcher, a guy that was the extra skater last weekend. But this weekend, he finds himself on that top line. I thought he was really gritty last weekend. Made a couple of plays that don't really show up in the box score, but none, nonetheless had a great game. And they're going to keep this line on the ice with Solo and Pelnick as the defenseman. Fletcher winning the draw, helped along to Solo by Molinaro, and they'll fire it in looking for Sullivan. But the puck gets stopped by the ice. And Nazareth trying to clear, can't do it. Sullivan shot up and out of play here into the netting. And one As thing, we, one thing we haven't mentioned, Matt, sorry to step over you, is head coach George Roll for this Nazareth, Nazareth team. He was a player on the 1984 national championship team for Bowling Green back in 1984. But more importantly, from 97 to 2003, he was also the head coach at Oswego State. And in that 2002-2003 season, the team went 26 23-6-1, lost the national championship game, but Coach Roll was really the guy that started the dominant era for the South Sudan State hockey team. And of course, had Coach Gosick underneath him as an assistant when Gosick eventually goes on to take, uh, take over for the Lakers. As Oswego State picking up the puck in the offensive zone. Back on front, shot, blocked. Solo with it now, a good slap pass over to Molinaro, and he'll leave it for Solo. Solo trying to get into the zone, he'll just punch it in deep for Fletcher as Nazareth takes over here momentarily. 
And they're going to try to escape the zone. But again, this four check for the Lakers. And Pelnick keeping it in momentarily on the pinch. A good job by Sullivan to get back for his man. Yeah, Nazareth just hasn't really been able to control the puck all that well this game. Struggling to get out of the defensive zone. That's going to go all the way down. But if you're Nazareth, you've got to control the puck in your own zone. And you want to go defense to offense. Something that the Lakers do extremely well. But for Nazareth, it's kind of just been being content, sitting back in the defensive zone. They want to put some type of pressure on this Oswego State defense. Because that defense has made a couple mistakes early on. they got to capitalize on those. And it is tough for Nazareth, you know, playing your first game. You're also playing against a team in Oswego State that has such a good forecheck as Nazareth trying to make something happen on this faceoff. And Riche will hold it up. Good cover there. And a little skirmish behind the net, as it looks like that was Shanley pushing solo a little bit. Yeah, another skirmish in front of that. Nothing like last weekend, of course. The almost brawl that happened between Oswego State and Carlton Place. But talking to Captain Car uh, alternate captain Carter Allen earlier this week, he said, you know, it's hockey. Those things happen. Obviously, situationally, we might want to be better. But no suspensions came of it. Travis Broman, of course, in the lineup tonight. So Oswego State, you know, it's hockey. Those fights are going to happen. Yeah, one thing you wish is for Broman to keep his gloves on a little bit. but. No harm, no foul at the end of the day as the Lakers try to escape, and they do, but just hops over the stick of Mitch Emerson as Nazareth looks to go the other way. Tyler Carr with it now. Had Gillespie, but couldn't get the pass over to him, and instead Gillespie's gonna retreat and try to just fire it in. Bunko on the forecheck, and Oswego State keeps it in. It's Gillespie. Gillespie fighting for the puck, can't get there as he lands on his feet as Nazareth looks to escape, and they do so. But a missed pass, and Bunko Quick ups to Mitch Emerson, looking for something to happen. Cuts back, Curry with it now, shot, save. And uh, Carter Allen, excuse me, will pick it up and recoil to set thing, thing, yeah, things back up. Great job by Mitch Emerson there, found the pass in front of the net, and Tyler Curry whistled one, just cleared off the pad, but a really good job by Mitch Emerson and a great shift as he heads to the bench, just fighting for those loose pucks. Oswego State never really giving up on those 50-50 uh, opportunities, and that's where they excel. Kubara firing the puck in deep, and he'll go for a line change, as all five skaters are new for Nazareth College. So we'll stay looking to exit their zone. It's Kirkby with it. He'll dangle his way, and he'll fire it in for a little chip and chase with Scorpio. Scorpio can't control it quite well, so now it's going to be Nazareth the other way. Houlihan with it, firing it in deep, and he'll go in for a forecheck, looking for his Antonucci, and a play by him to keep it away from the net. Houlihan with it now, firing it back on the slot, and a good stop by Novik, and the Lakers have a chance for a three on two. LeBlanc with it on the right wing. Hesitate back over to Novik, back out, and a good defensive effort by Houlihan to get back. And now Nazareth looking to go the other way, three on two. And they'll fire it back in and around. Kirkby, one of the lone skaters out here for the Lakers, on that back check, good job by him covering defensively. And it's LeBlanc looking to go the other way now. Through the legs, and he'll get it over to Novik who just fired in deep and goal for a change. Yeah, Nazareth, good opportunity there. Michael Houlihan, the freshman for Nazareth, had a really great shift there. He almost had an opportunity to break out, but a good job defensively. Oswego State had that three on two, and he was able to stop the rush. And it looks like there's going to be another call going against possibly the Lakers. Yeah, it looks like it's an interference call on what appears to be I can't quite make out the number just yet. It looks like it's Pelnick, and he wasn't too happy about that. Not sure exactly what that call is, but once again, I'll speak say going on that penalty kill. Nazareth last season, 17.2% on the power play. So a little bit pedestrian. Also, this is a Nav Nazareth team, as you mentioned. They lost their top two scorers from last year. They lost five of their seven top scorers from last year to graduation. So it's going to be tough for them to find that offensive rhythm, but it does help to be on the power play twice already to start this game. Pelnick to the box, 9-19 left in this first period. Oswego State leads 1-0 on a Jody Sullivan goal in the first minute of the period as the Lakers fire it down for Michael Tilford to come out and play the puck. Really great job by Oswego State keeping that four-check pressure up. They don't want Nazareth to get into their sets where they're passing around the point, getting those shots, those deflections. They're meeting them right at center ice, and that's what the Oswego State philosophy has been this year. Molinaro trying to dance his way in, won't be able to do so. Hits the ice, looks like the fans wanted a call, but no whistle there. As Nazareth punching it in, it's Xander Pryor behind the net, battling with Zach with Brown. Carter Allen there as well for the Lakers. And Molinaro will pick it up and send it the length of the ice for the clear, a minute 15 left to go in this power play. Yeah, Xander Pryor, one of those guys, a senior on that top line. Only 21 career points in 67 games played. That was a nifty little move he had along the boards, kind of dumped it off the boards, a little swim move. Unable to find the net, but it's still a nifty little move, and we'll see if he can be a factor on that top line. Looks like Brian Miller hits the ice hard for Nazareth, but Carter Allen will pick it up and throw it down the length of the ice again. 
about 50 seconds left to go here in this power play for Nazareth. Doesn't seem like they've gotten a shot off here as Emerson trying to get something happen here on the shorthanded attempts. Yeah, keeping that four check pressure up. Mitch Emerson's been very active tonight. Might not show up in the box score, but he's been great attacking the puck, keeping that four check aggressive. Ball also leads for Kubara. And they'll try to get something going here. Taking a seat is a Nazareth Golden Flyer, and Gillespie looks to move the other way, and he'll just dump it in and get off for a line change as the Lakers trying to kill off these last 25 seconds of the penalty kill. Yeah, Gillespie not usually a guy you see on that penalty kill unit, but Coach Gosa kind of trying everything out, not exactly sure what they want to do special teams-wise this season thus far. Poulahan trying to dance his way in, and the Lakers will clear, and LeBlanc having a chance if he can beat it out and just can't do it. Takes a spill, no call there, and that's a good no call. Yeah, just both players kind of equally fighting for the puck. LeBlanc just a half a second slower than the Nazareth player, Casey Cabrera. Brian Miller takes it to the outside for Nazareth. Looking in front, can't get a shot off. Is Shanley as the Lakers return to full strength. And Kirby will take the ice for Pelnick, who, who goes to the bench. Yeah, great job there, Ross. We can say once again on the penalty and kill, and it looks like they're going to be going on it once again. Yeah, heavy hit by Scorpio, who's not too happy about it, but it looks like that was Shanley who got hit, and he wasn't too happy himself giving Scorpio a push to the back. Yeah, it looked like it might have been a hit from behind, maybe a boarding penalty, and it did look like a dangerous hit. And now Oswego State, if you just can't be happy if you're Coach Gosick. That's three sloppy penalties so far, and they did get that early goal, but since then, they've looked a little bit lackluster. Yeah, and this is a game that kind of falls right into Nazareth's trap, for lack of a better term. Low scoring, low shooting, 5-1 in shots so far for the Lakers. 7.04 left to go, and if you're the Lakers, you're used to seeing 10, 15 shots in that time, especially last, last week against Carlton Place. Nazareth to their third power play, looking to find something here as the puck goes up and out of play. All the way up and over the net. You don't see that one too often, but tipped through. And as you mentioned, this is the game that Nazareth wants to play. As Coach Gosick said, hey, I know Coach Roll. He, he'll win a game 1-0. to zero. He'll tie a game 0-0 zero to zero and be happy. They want to come in and grind it out. But the thing is, they have to score at some point on this power play unit. An 0-3 start would not be great for the confidence. And also, Oswego State's penalty kill has looked strong so far. Roman looking to play the puck at the red line. He'll fire it down for Brown, using his four check to his advantage, trying to make something happen here. But instead, Nazareth looking to escape the zone is McDonald with the puck, leaving it for Mendezun with about a minute 35 left to go in this power play for Nazareth College. Firing it up and going in. A good hit by Carter Allen as Broman trying to clear the puck or at least maintain possession in a two-on-two -two scrum. Nazareth trying to come away, then they do so. It's Shanley with it, and he'll fire it back around, but it looks like Tyler Curry will pick it up and send it the length of the ice for the Lakers. Of course, that penalty was, in fact, a boarding Luke, Joey Scorpio going off for two minutes and a minute 10 left to go in that. Yeah, I think an obvious call there, but if you're Nazareth, getting someone going, James McDonald, their captain, the senior from Potsdam, he looks like he's the guy that could, maybe could get something going on a Nazareth team. He's on that third line, trying to kind of figure out their line combinations, of course. It is their first exhibition match. McKinney battling with the Lakers. Kirk being there and Pelnick as well. And Nazareth comes with him momentarily before it's dumped the length of the ice by Matt, uh, Solo. Yeah, Solo making a good defensive play there. I feel like for most of this penalty kill for Oswego State, we've been highlighting their forwards with that four check and also their ability to block shots in front of the net. But Jeff Solo, a good job there to just get the puck out of the Oswego State zone. Stanek will fire it in deep, and Richet leaves out. Dangerous play, as he just has to fire it over to Frojulin at the point for Nazareth. Up and over to Stanek. He loses it, and now we've got a chance for a breakaway. Looking, moving in. Passing shot, scores! Joey Molinaro, shorthanded, gets his first of the exhibition. And what a great job by Jody Sullivan there. I thought he was going to take the shot. Instead, we'll see on the replay, it was a nifty little dump out to Joey Molinaro, who hammered it, home, hammered it home. And Jody Sullivan, as you take a look here, tipped out by Molinaro. Sullivan on the breakaway. You think he's going to shoot, but no. A little nifty dump off to Molinaro. No chance for Nazareth there. And Oswego State, a shorthanded goal. And a little dangerous play for Jody Sullivan. In a breakaway, you'd like to see him shoot. Had the pressure behind him. But the hockey IQ and the mindset to know that Molinaro's right behind you and the, the guts to make that pass instead of just shooting the puck, a little surprising. That didn't pay off. I know Gosick wouldn't be too happy. You know, take the shot, not the extra pass. But nonetheless, Oswego with a shot there. And it looked like Tilford couldn't find the rebound as it was just behind him. Yeah, really just left Tilford out to dry on that one. He didn't really have much he could do. I mean, he assumed Sullivan was going to shoot that as well. But like you said, that IQ, that chemistry feel by Sullivan to dump that one back. Coons fires it in for Nazareth, but Oswego State will clear as the power play ends, and it's going to be an icing here as the Lakers can't touch up. 
Yeah, Michael Tilford, not usually the starting goaltender for Nazareth. Last year was mostly Sean Kuhn. We'll see how Nazareth managed this. You know, Oswego State probably going to roll out three goaltenders tonight. We'll see if Nazareth does that as well with three goalies listed on the line chart. Yeah, and as for both of them, both very capable. Both Kuhn above, uh, above 9.30, 9.36, and Tilford at 9.20. So both very capable goaltenders that look, I don't say lost. I think their goaltending, their defense has been great, very uncharacteristic. They do look a step slow. And I think that's a lot to do with the fact that they haven't had that exhibition game just yet. Also, two freshman defensemen for Nazareth. They're trying to figure out that chemistry. They lost a lot of seniors, but this defensive core is very veteran for them, so it's kind of surprising to see them struggling early. Yeah, seven seniors graduated last year for Nazareth, as one of them is down, might have gotten a high stick, but no call there. It was Brian Miller who popped back up as the strum continues along the boards. 4.10 left to go here as Riche will take a face off, or 4.30, 30, I should say, as someone hits the ice. That's Justin Miller for Nazareth. As Riche flew all the way out there to cover up that puck. Yeah, what a risky play for Riche. Ray Falso was almost able to hammer that one home. And Falso is another guy from Skinny Atlas, played for Skinny Atlas High School. Just a program that continues to, to churn out NCAA D3 talent. Falso almost had a chance there in front of the net. Yeah, and he plays with another uh, really just a talented player. One of the guys on this team that's just so talented. He was uh, second on the team in power play goals with three and the UCHC all-rookie team back in his freshman year. As Broman dancing his way in, trying to make something happen, can't do so, but he'll pick it up at the half wall, battle along the boards, and he'll get it over to DiCarlo. DiCarlo using those legs to really push forward, and McMillan gets it, cuts in, fake shot, shot again, save, rebound out in front, and Lakers can't get a handle on it, but Broman picking back up shot, just goes wide over McMillan at the half wall, trickling back to the point. He'll try to fire it in deep, and he'll get it there for Brown. Brown with it now, battling among boards. Looks like there's DiCarlo there as well. Broman pries it out, gets it back to McMillan, has some space over to Novick. Hesitates, back over Broman, shot, save, rebound out in front, just cleared by Hallis. But Novick picks it back up for McMillan at the point, hesitates, not much of a room there, just trying to get in behind the net, and he does so as Broman goes to work on the four check. Yeah, I don't want to say lazy shot from Travis Broman, but it looks like he had a little bit more room than he thought he did. Kind of just flipped that right into the pads of Nazareth's goaltender, Michael Tilford. Nazareth looking to clear. Looks like all five skaters tired for Nazareth as the Lakers get a change. A really long shift here. High pressure in the offensive zone as well. Nazareth will fire it up and over to McMillan and he'll pick it up. As there's a heavy four checker, was Connor Davis, a freshman off the bench. Finishes his hit and he's gonna hold up this offense. Antonini had some time and space, but couldn't get in and do the offside by Connor Davis. Yeah, Davis kind of got taken out there. If he was able to be on his feet and out of the zone, that could have been a really good opportunity and a high danger scoring chance for Nazareth. Menezun's pass gets over to McMillan and his look to exit using the boards. Jody Sullivan with it now. Very active in this game so far with two points. And tripped up is what looked to be the Carlo, or rather Colton Fletcher, excuse me. And the Lakers will go to their first power play here with 2.45 left to go in this first period. Yeah, pretty easy call there for the Lions. And Casey Kubara came over, kind of just slid his stick right under the skates. And we talked about that on Oswego State power play. Last week, Coach Gosick said, hey, I'm just going to roll out the guys that are already going to be out there. So we'll see how they do this. We have a replay here of the penalty. Is he trying to make a play up the boards? A steal by Oswego State, and then right there, an easy call there for the referee to make. Can't do that on the, the hook right there. So for the Lakers, trying to get something going here. And as you said, Luke, they're just trying to try things out. See who looks good on the power play. And obviously, Derek Brown, one of those guys that looks tremendous on the power play last week, although they only went one for six. Brown with it now, back for Novick. Looking for Gillespie. Novick with it back again at center point. Over to Brown at the circle. Back to Brown. Back down low for Emerson, who will cut back out for Broman. Shot, save, up high. And a tough save and a good job by Tilford to recoil and get that. As there's a pushing and shoving. And Brown's like, oh no, not again. Yeah. He doesn't need another fight on his resume. And guess who was right in the middle there? Travis Broman trying to stir things up. Keeps the gloves on, luckily. The crowd didn't like that one. But Travis Broman just seems to be a guy that can't keep his nose out of those little battles that happen in front of the net. He wanted a piece of that one as well. Yeah, he, he loves getting in those, those dirty areas, those little pushing and shoving. And he plays with such an edge, a lot like Mike Gillespie, the senior for the Lakers. And those are two guys, you put them together. They're, there's going to be some sparks flying. as a shot here on the power play for Gillespie goes wide. Derek Brown will pick it up. A shot by Gillespie. Rebound out in front. Trickles to Novick who cuts in and he can't control it only momentarily to get back over to Gillespie. Gillespie creeping in to Novick. 
Hesitates, looking for Gillespie, but he'll settle for Brown at the circle. Hesitates, over to Gillespie up high, he has to hold it and catch it. So it'll take time now, it's about a minute nine left on this power play. Derek Brown, trickles down back to the crease for Gillespie. Back out in front of Broman who can't control it. Brown with a shot, rebound, up and out of play. Looks like it blocked it. the stick of Sean Hallis blocks it out of play. But the Lakers a little more methodical tonight. Yeah, a little bit interesting because Coach Ghost excited early in the week, you know, our power play unit, we want them to get as many shots as possible. We want them to get two to three shots for, per shift. And that time kind of just passing around a little bit, like you said, lackadaisical. But Max Novick and Mike Gillespie, two guys that really crushed it on that power play unit last season, kind of just passing it around, not really able to find an opening in that Nazareth defense. And it's Shanley with it, trying to make something happen, but Kirkby does a good job getting back on the puck, and he'll leave it for Tyler Curry with it. 40 seconds left to go in this power play with a minute 25 left in the game as Fletcher has some speed as he enters the zone. Hesitates, tripped up by Sullivan, but the Lakers just keeping it in is Kirkby. Who will look for Molinaro. Molinaro back out to the top of the point for Curry. He'll settle things down as the Lakers get things up. And Sullivan almost pulling the trigger, can't do so. A great job tying the stick up. Looked like it was Shanley on that one as Nazareth clears it. Yeah, great job by Shanley to tie up the stick. Jody Sullivan's been the guy to watch in this one so far, and he's been very active in front of that net. Nazareth has identified him, and you know, like you said, trying to get that stick tied up. Colton Fletcher enters the zone with ease, and he'll circle back looking at Curry. Looks him off and get him back to set our point for Curry. Looking over for Kirkby. Curry instead shanks the shot, and we've got a breakaway. All in, all alone, slow, hesitate shot. What a save by Riche. Oh my goodness, on Casey Kubara. What a save as the whistle stops due to Kubara's helmet coming off. David Riche, how do you do? Post to post, put the pad out, made the save into the boards. We're gonna look at it. Casey Kubara was on the breakaway. Riche stays honest, full split, pad to pad. Post to post, David Riche shows out. And the little stick poke that, at that, the end. That second to get effort that to clear away. that rebound, Luke, you said it, words right in my mouth. And that looked like a shootout move for Kubar. He had all that time and space. Really just, and that kind of goes down to that, that mindset and being a little bit aware in the back of your mind. Hearing the stick tap from Riche saying, power plays over, someone get back. And Riche bailing his team right out right there on a beautiful save as Carter Allen gets it over to Chris McMillan. McMillan moving up the ice here with about 20 seconds to go. We'll fire over to Scorpio who tries to tuck it in deep. LeBlanc on the forecheck. Great active stick and he'll get it over to Kirkby behind the net. Kirkby gets some time and space and a good play by him and he'll leave it for LeBlanc. As Kirkby has it now behind the net. Trying to get some separation, can't do so. Crowd wants a penalty but it won't be called there. And with three seconds left it looks like the Co Nazareth College will just flutter it up and out of play as the period ends 2-0 for the Lakers. Now Luke. At the end of the first 20, what'd you see? You know, Oswego State didn't play the best period. I mean, they were in the box three times. They, they registered 10 shots, got two goals, but if you're Coach Gosick, you have to be happy with the 2 nothing lead because it could have gone a completely different way. Yeah, you most certainly do, and you look at this team and you say, we took three power penalties. Terrible penalties to take. We had two power plays. Didn't do too much with that, but still, up 10, 2 nothing. excuse me, 10 to 2 unofficial on the shots, that's impressive. Yeah, it's also impressive that a little bit of a defensive lap towards the end of that period, and then David Riche, the big save, that might have been a louder crowd reaction than even the goal. I mean, these Oswego State fans, they know the type of pressure their goaltenders are under, and David Riche really showed up on that save. That was mighty impressive. Oh, just so impressive, and you talk about the needing that goaltending to really step up, that's what you see from that. That's the type of save that you're not expecting and you really need. And we're gonna take we're gonna take a quick break here on Hockey Night in Oswego. When we return, Mike Ron will take the guys through that first period with highlights and analysis here on Hockey Night in Oswego on WTOP 10. Hello and welcome back to the Morano Campus Center here at Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Morano alongside me, Patrick Machado, Zach Gase, and Oswego currently leading 2 to nothing here in the first intermission. So we're going to kind of go on these first goals all, uh, first here. Jody Sullivan getting it started here for the Lakers. Yeah, that first goal for Oswego, a complete line effort between that first line. Colton Fletcher, Sullivan, and Mo and Arrow. You see a quick play from behind the net. Um, win a puck battle on the boards. He's being taken down in the process and Sullivan is able to get that shot off. Molinaro and Fletcher get the assists on it. Then Pat, here's the second goal. Sullivan rushes in, then throws it back to Molinaro who gets the goal. Once again, that's the same line that got the, the first goal. So they're really uh, 
given pressure in uh, with one goal, one assist for each player so far. He throws it back into the pressure that Marnar already had, the deep pressure. Should have yeah. just shot it. Yeah, and that goal was a shorthanded goal, but I like his decision to shoot there. If you are facing a 2 on 0 situation as a goalie, Tilford has to play the man with the puck. And as Sullivan began to run out of space there on the left wing, he goes over to the weak side for Molinaro, who's able to convert on his opportunity. One thing to point out here, Joseph Molinaro's goal there was short-handed. They got that while they, you know, they gave up that penalty. Oswego giving up three penalties already. What do they need to do to kind of limit that? Yeah, they were bad penalties. Um, so Coach Gosick does need to talk with his team about discipline. But Oswego's penalty kill so far holding up really strong. They haven't allowed a single shot on Riche when they were shorthanded. Yeah, those two interference penalties coming in, one right away at the start of the period, then another one halfway through, following up by Joe Scorpio's boarding call. You saw that. Yeah, but it is a big problem taking these many penalties. That interference penalty, um, as it expired, they go right back to the penalty kill again. And as you saw, the shot total unofficially is, only, is 10 to two. So yes, it's a wide margin, but they could have had a lot more opportunities to go on the offensive. Yes, the, the penalty, the penalty kill didn't really allow any of opportunity for their structure to set up for Naz to set up on the power play. So if you're Coach Gosick, you're winning by a score of two to nothing. You're telling your team, sit back, yeah, keep the physical energy up so that you don't allow Nazareth to do anything, but make sure all of those hits are clean. Of course. Now Nazareth now gonna jump over. Like we said, three power plays already have not capitalized at all. What do they need to do to kind of find the puck in the back of the net, especially on those power plays? Well, Oswego State's forecheck on the penalty kill is relentless. They don't typically sit back in that defensive box that you see hyper-defensive-minded penalty kills do. They like to challenge the men with the puck, and that's what makes them pretty lethal. Yeah, Naz is throwing away pucks right off the breakout. Usually you see teams try to trap them in the neutral zone, but you see Oswego forcing them to make plays, allowing Oswego to intercept those passes and then get those opportunities shorthanded. And now another thing here, something that we saw last game, carrying it over into this one here is the physicality. We've seen it a lot last game, we're seeing it now. What is going on here? How is it gonna impact this play? You see multiple hits coming in on the four check, allowing Oswego to get the puck, then work their structure around and get shots on the goaltender for Nats. That's what's causing this. Oswego State has never been a team that was shy of finishing their checks in the corners. And you see, it does boil over to some stuff after the whistle, and that's expected, especially if your team is down. You're being outshot by five times. You need to spark your team somehow, and usually physical force is a way to do that. The one thing they need to watch, though, is too much. Too much led to those two interference calls and that boarding call. So they need to watch themselves going forward. And absolutely there. The physicality is playing a big role in this one here. Oswego really trying to show what they could do here and try and they really can't stop that going into that uh going forward in that match up there now let's talk about colton fletcher for a second last week he was the extra skater now he's moving up to the first line um yes it was only a temporary move as Isaac is probably going to be centering sullivan and molinaro but he doesn't look out of place there on first line minutes yeah of course joe Isaac with the scratch it's only an expedition game get opportunity to the fletcher Fletcher centering the first line. He draws a penalty late in the period, but he also got that assist in the in the first goal. And so now that'll we'll go. It's gonna take a quick break here. When we come back, we got some goalie and defensive breakdown here. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Hockey Night in Oswego. So the Media Summit is uh, an opportunity for campus to bring in experts in the field and have them meet with students and network and talk about what's happening in media and broadcasting and news and public relations. And it's a really good chance for students to um, have some real life experience with people who are actually doing what it is they think they want to do when they graduate from here in a couple of years. Just sitting in the audience, like, this is a really cool thing that we're doing at Oswego that I don't think they do at a lot of other institutions and how cool the opportunity was for, for our students and for our staff and for the faculty. Interstate moving is much more complicated than just moving within your city or town. Anyone can fall victim to move. 
Hello and welcome back to Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Morano, alongside me Patrick Machado and Zach Gase. And we're going to have a quick period summary here as Oswego takes the lead here 2 to nothing. Guys, what do you see from these stats from this first period? Well, of course, you saw the 12 shots to 4. Those are attempted shots, as we said, unofficially 10-2. to two. Uh, Penalty minutes, though, 6-2, to two, Pat. Yeah, Oswego State, like we mentioned in previously, needs to control their penalties a little bit. Oswego State's penalty kill so far has been perfect, but you can't count that that will be the case every time. Yes, it does look like a little bit of a mismatch, especially from what we've seen so far. Um, Nazareth unable to really move the puck into any grade-A opportunity area, but eventually it might burn them. So they need to cut back on that play before it comes back to haunt them. And then you also saw power plays, both were 0-1. You saw Oswego move the puck though. They like to do that umbrella up top, get it cross ice back to the top of the circles and look for the cross ice what, what, uh, uh, once he passes. Yeah, it's really good when you have two players on either side of the ice that can be set up for one-timers and you can switch the play. Both players are more than capable of quarterbacking this power play and that's what makes them so strong. One of the struggles that Nazareth have had this first period is their shots. Four shots already. How has that impacted this first period, and what do they need to do to kind of improve that? Yeah, David Riche hasn't been tested at all, really, by the Nazareth Golden Flyers, with the exception of that late breakaway, which we'll get onto a little bit later. But uh, so we, like Nazareth needs to play a much more simple game. Gain center, dump the puck in, trust that your wingers can go in and win puck battles with Oswego, because right now nothing is working. Yeah, I don't really see a four check out of them once they try to get through the blue zone. You talked about dumping the puck and run their four check, break down Oswego down low, work it up top and get shots on Roche. And Pat, I know you talked about it before here. Uh, Riche has been tested much. How has each goalie kind of been looking like and also their defense on each team? Well, I wouldn't necessarily blame that second goal on Tilford. Re either goal, rather, taking a look at Oswego, that one shot coming off the rush. And here is that breakaway move. And one thing that you might have noticed, Riche was at full split, but using that paddle at full extension manages to sweep it into the corner. That just shows his hockey sense there following up with his initial save. That's great rebound control overall. That allows the defense to move the player out along with the puck into the corner. And that starts your breakout right away. And like I mentioned, Tilford, um, neither of those goals are really his fault. There was a quick play down low, a blown assignment, and then a two on oh. Um, it was just a perfect decision from Sullivan to pass that puck as he didn't really have a lane to shoot through. Maybe just a couple centimeters over the shoulder, but Molinaro had a better look. Yeah, Tilford definitely took away the shot there on that 2-0 rush. That's all you got to do as a goalie when you get into that situation. Yeah, and if you're David Riche, you have to be feeling somewhat confident coming out of that first there, but going into the second, you got to have the same mindset there is that you got to play the hot hand. Yeah, you do, and unfortunately, uh, part of a side effect of goaltenders not seeing much action is they're not necessarily as warm as the person on 200 feet away from you. Yeah, he came right out of the gate. Only only those four shots opportunities though, but all four of those were key. He's still in the game. He has a mindset in the game, and we'll see what Ed Guzik's going to do next. And we're going to take a break here. I'm Michael Moran, alongside me, Patrick Machado, Zach Case. Puck drop coming up for the second period, coming up soon. You're watching Hockey Night in Oswego. And welcome back here to Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Morano alongside me, Patrick Machado, Zach Gaze. Oswego currently leading two to nothing. And I'll get, I ask you guys real quick, what does each team need to do uh, going into this uh, second period? Like I mentioned before in, the, in this intermission show, if you're George Roll, you're telling the Golden Flyers to keep it simple. Take the simple play. Don't try to get past Oswego's neutral zone trap or four checkers. And we can only speculate that the Golden Flyers are going to be rotating their goaltenders as this is their first exhibition of the year. So we might see Tilford, we might see Sean Kuhn, but either way, they need to play a much more simple game because their forward lines aren't doing anything against Oswego's defense. Ed Guzik is definitely telling Oswego right now to stay disciplined. Like I said, those heavy hits, they need to keep doing that to keep pressure on Nazareth, but they can't give up dumb penalties. You don't want to let Naz back into this. 
Also, goalie situation, if that changes, they need to stay strong in front of whoever Ed Guzik puts back in that. And we're going to take a break here. Coming up, puck drop very soon. I'm Michael Morano. Hockey Night, you're watching Hockey Night in Oswego. Welcome back to Hockey Night in Oswego here. Matt Wildling joined alongside Luke Owens in the Steve Levy press box. And now for the Lakers, you're up 2-0 after that first period. But it was not your best period. You, you take three bad penalties, but you still have two goals on a 2-0 lead. Yeah, you have to be happy for Coach Gosick with that 2-0 lead. But some really uncharacteristic mistakes for Oswego State, especially with their defense. Carter Allen and Tyler Curry were a little bit sloppy in that right. first Cedric, period. Cedric Hans in, in net for the Lakers as we start this second period. Of course, the, the switch for the, for, uh, those switch ends, so the Lakers actually get the short change as Joey Sullivan d dangles his way in, trying to make something happen. He'll leave it over for Molinaro. Molinaro behind the net, picked up by Fletcher, and it'll get a whistle by Tilford. So Michael Tilford still in net for the Nazareth Golden Flyers, while the Lakers roll their goaltenders a period apiece, most likely with Hanson taking the second. Yeah, we'll see if Nazareth has any changing going on, but Tilford, you know, not the greatest first period, but also got hung up to dry a couple times. Obviously that two-on-one with Sullivan and Molinaro being the second goal, and that time he did get hung out to dry. Really not his fault. You know, he hasn't had the greatest of games so far, but we'll see if he can pick it up in the second period. And even that first goal, it's tough to blame him. When you've got a guy right in front of your crease, you're already down on the butterfly. There's not much you can do as Nashville looks to go three on two, but slipping down is, excuse me, Xander Pryor. As they're looking to make something happen. Shot by Hallis, rebound out in front, and a good job by the Lakers to pick it up and try to go the other way with it. Good job by Bunker, selling off the body, trying to block that shot in front. He didn't get a piece of it, but that's just that attitude that Coach Gosick and Coach Whitelaw want to instill on their, both their defenders and their forwards. Bunker will tuck it in here, and Emerson will pick up the rebound. And Max Novick loses the puck to his man, but a good job getting back for it. Referee also in the way a little bit, as it looked like it was Justin Miller trying to get that one going. Lakers stay on side, but can't control the puck, as it's Brian Miller the other way. Three on two action here with Bunker trying to get back. Shot! Rebound back out in front to the point. McDonald can't control it, and it'll bounce out all the way to Ian Mendezun. Mendezun, the junior here for, uh, for Nazareth, one of the better defenders on this team. As Nazareth tries to reset, entering the zone. But Pelnick gets it in first as Broman at the half wall. A bad no-look pass and gives it up. And it was Ray Falser who had some chance, or at least some space, as Broman will try to clear. But instead, there's going to be a delay penalty on the Lakers yet again. Looked like it was an interference call behind the play or a boarding as the Lakers try to touch up. Brown will touch up here for the Lakers. 18-10 left to go in this first period, in this second period, excuse me. And the Lakers back to the box. It looks like that's not Travis Broman, but rather Derek Brown, perhaps. It's or rather Pelnick, Charlie. excuse me. It's gonna be Charlie Pelnick getting that penalty. And Pelnick and Solo, a really sloppy exchange there on defense. It was, I believe, Solo that had that no-look pass that you mentioned. Almost led to a Naz chance in front of the net, but just really sloppy play from us. We go say uncharacteristic. Now their fourth penalty, and that penalty kill unit has been strong, but you don't want to keep relying on it every five minutes, it seems. Yeah, and that's not that's not a recipe for success in the SUNYAC, especially, not even talking about Division Three and all in a national title hopes, which this team may have. Shot back in front. What a save by Hanson on the rebound. It was James McDonald right on the doorstep, and a great job by Hanson getting over. Yeah, Hanson did a really great job there. Kind of let up that big, juicy rebound, but then was able to get his pad over to the other side. A nice job steering it away into the boards. Oswego State clears the puck here. About a minute 25 left to go in this power play for the Golden Flyers. Well, if you're so Oswego State, at least you get to see your goaltenders kind of have these tough opportunities on the penalty kill. Not, of course, the philosophy they want, but you will get to see some action for Hanson. As the Lakers clear again after a Nazareth Golden Flyers defenseman takes a seat. And for the Lakers, this kind of helps because last uh, and, and a two on two here is Brown looking for a pass, can't get it out in front. And Scorpio just missing it as he takes hit, but Brown will pick it back up and just fire it back. Or excuse me, that's not Brown, that's Curry. Firing back for McMillan who will just dump it in. Can't get it all the way. It's a good stop by Shanlin. He enters the zone with some speed, but a good job tying up is LeBlanc as he'll fire it all the way around. And goes out of play. Now getting back to what I was, the point I was trying to make was the Lakers, you only see three shots on goal for, for uh, Hanson in, week, in the first week of the season against Carlton Place. Now you almost kind of want to see him get peppered, see what he can do when they're under adversity. 
Yeah, and it's so tough when you're only judging off of one period of play. So you assume it's going to be probably David Riche, not to assume anything, but in that against Cortland in that first matchup. But yeah, if you're Hanson, I think he wants to see some shots too to prove what he can do. Right, it's tough for the Lakers to split time again in a game that really counts. You don't want to have a goaltender cold as Nazareth gets their power play back up and running. It's Casey Kubara back to the point for Owen Coons, who hesitates, has some time and space, and a deflected shot up and over the net. A good chance there as it was Brian Miller who had some time and space in that in that slot. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's intimidation, but Oswego State kind of almost wants Naz to push down and try to get some deflection from the net, and Nazareth has kind of seemed more content to just sit back at the point and fire away. But when they don't have other forwards in front of the net, those deflection opportunities just aren't going to be there. About five seconds left on this penalty to Charlie Pelnick, so it looks like the Lakers will go unscathed once more as they've got a perfect penalty kill with Pelnick getting off the ice. Ryan Bunka breaking in for him as Nazareth's got a three on two, or it's a two on two now, holding. Back out, shot saved by Hanson and no rebound there. A good shot by Justin Miller, keeping it low, but right into the gut of Cedric Hanson. Yeah, Miller had a really good opportunity. He had a solid freshman year, 13 points, six goals, seven assists, and Hanson just kind of gobbled that one up right into the pads. No chance for a rebound, and Cedric Hanson really showing what he can do in the second period. We know he's a talented goaltender, just didn't get a lot of games last season. No, and only playing seven games, it's tough to really assess him. And then 920 save percentage, impressive. But again, it's a little iffy when you only play seven games. But he's a guy that could definitely play 15 or 20. He's a starting caliber goalie in the Suniac, as is Riche, as the Lakers look to break out. Can't do so with Hallis picking up the puck. And he'll fire back in. Hanson out to play the puck for Antonucci behind his own net, as the Lakers look to set up shop here. And Derek Brown takes a seat. But the Lakers are able to exit the zone unscathed once more, as Broman cutting in two on two. Shot deflected or blocked by Stanek. Or rather more, and someone's hit down hard, and that'll be a penalty here. Some more pushing and shoving. We can't quite see who's out there, and it looks like it's more on the ice. Referee's hand up and slow to get up, and it looked like Antonucci was pulled off of more by a, a Golden Flyer. And we'll see exactly who's going to the box and for what, but that was a little bit of a, a weird play. We got a replay coming up here. Maybe this will help sort out a little bit. I'll speak to say on the attack. Roman took a shot, and then coming down the other way, right Ooh. there is the penalty. And they're going to put two Nazareth players in the box here. And wow, that's a really heavy hit. I couldn't quite make out the number, but that's a dangerous hit. Looked like his elbow got up there. Not quite sure if it hit DeCarlo right in the face, but that was really dangerous. And it looks like it might have been either Hallis or Moore. I'm leaning towards Hallis on that one. Both get two minutes because it looked like it was more earlier in the play, or late in the play, I should say with some pushing and shoving. And this is a very rare occurrence, Matt. I can't tell you the last time I saw two players go to the box on the same team, creates a five on three power play for two full minutes. Oswego State definitely wants to capitalize here. And Broman almost getting his stick in there for a hooking. But the Lakers at five on three, you want to see the passing, but sometimes when you go to five on three, you forget to shoot a little bit. So you can't be as methodical, get pucks to the net, outman the defense out in front as Broman picks it up and he's got some speed. Cuts around the net or he'll hesitate, has Gillespie on the half wall and he'll get it to him. Looking at Novak at the point, but Gillespie will keep it down low for Broman. Back out for Gillespie, looking for a shot. Back to our pass, shot, back out in front, Emerson. Good save by Tilford. Gillespie back out at the point for Novik. Gillespie fakes the shot, hesitates now for Broman. Back out to Gillespie, hesitates a little bit for Novik at the point. Cutting down a little bit deeper, not a lot of movement on this power play. Back out for Gillespie, shot, just goes wide. And Novik trying to keep it in, and he cannot do it. A minute 10 left to go in this five on three power play. And if you're Gillespie, you're more dangerous as a passer. That was kind of an uncharacteristic. That's the third time we've seen him wind up for that big slap shot. You want to see him get down low, get in with those tight passes. He's got a heavy shot, but he's got to hit the net on that one because that's as good as a clear forward of the Golden Flyers. Gillespie for Novik, shot deflected wide. Roman calling for it, can't get much on it. And Gillespie will have to stay on. He looked like he was going off for a change. And he'll eventually get it here as Novik gets the puck. Fletcher coming out on for Gillespie. Back down out in front. Instead, Brown will circle back out to the top. Shot goes wide. Brown able to keep it in at the point with about 35 left to go on this five on three for the Lakers. Derek Brown trickling and holding with it as a couple more Lakers get on. Fletcher hesitates with that at the point. Back over to Novik. Cutting towards the center point. Back down for Brown. Looking. Looks for a pass out in front, but it skips over a sk stick, a good active stick by Nazareth to get that puck deflected. Back over for Fletcher. Shot. Save rebound is none. 
And what a stop for Tilford as they'll get a line change. Really outside of that opportunity in front of the net with Mitch Emerson, Oswego State just kind of looking stagnant on that power play unit. They're passing it around, passing it around, but as you said, not getting those shots up and those rebounds, really not a lot of action in front of the net. So Oswego State now 15 seconds left, and not to discredit Nazareth, who's done a really good job killing this penalty. They have, but for the Lakers, you want to see some movement. You want to see guys in the crease, in the slot, moving around, not just the outside. You're not going to score if you're not moving the puck or your bodies. As Fletcher gets over for Curry, hesitates. Back over for Kirkby holding for Curry. Back out for Sullivan, and he just can't keep a hand on it. As the power plays will expire. Fletcher with the shot and a great diving effort by Hallis. As the Lakers, with Hallis coming out of the box, couldn't quite see him as the Lakers get back to 5 on 5 with 2D. Yeah, not the 5 on 3 opportunity. Back out for Sullivan. Go. And a good job by Nazareth to clear the puck here. Looks like it might go all the way the length of the ice here for an icing, and they just needed a breather there for Nazareth. Yeah, they did, and now they're going to have to keep that same five out there on the ice, but Oswego State, not the power play you, or you'd expect from this team, a team that was so lethal on the power play last season. Like Coach Gosick said, they haven't really worked on the special teams quite as much as in past years. That's something they'll kind of figure out down the road, but using these different forward combinations really hasn't worked so far today. And look, does that, does that do you fear for that, not being able to score anything on that 5 on 3 and not really much on any power play at all, being that last year they were fifth in the nation at a 26.7% clip? Yeah, and I think two of those guys, Max Novick and Mike Gillespie, really did a great job in terms of passing last year on that power play unit. And they really, you know, it's the first game together, so we'll see if they get that chemistry down as time goes on. Curry fluffs the pass over to Allen, and now a chance the other way for the Nazareth Golden Flyers. Look, cutting in, a great stop by Curry, and a good second stop as well there as it was Henry McKinney coming in, and now they've got a three on two the other way. Looking for a shot, great active stick to flex up and into the glass. As Broman trying to escape, he can't quite get it to LeBlanc. He'll get over Scorpio, two on one with Curry. Scorpio down the left wall, shot, off the post. And that looks like a Nashville look to go the other way and can't quite control it, and now it's a three on three. Looking for McKinney or something. Good pass shot, blocked by what looked like it was Curry. He's slower to get up, looks a little tired, but he'll try to battle along the boards just to slow things down for the Lakers. McKinney with it now, loses it to Curry. Curry, not a lot of gas left in his engine as there's some battling behind the play. No call there as the sticks were tied up. Lakers punching in to get a line change. Yeah, Tyler Curry really comes off gas. He had a block shot, also as a part of that two on one, but really great line from Tyler Curry. Curry and Allen kind of struggled in that first period, but starting to get their wits about them in the second period. And the Lakers fire it in deep as they'll go off for a little four check action. And three guys all pretty deep there on the four check, but it's Nashville the other way, three on two. Looking over for Falso. On the shot, goes wide. And a long rebound, Kareem's all the way back for Mendezun. Back over for Coons. Looking and getting it to Miller. He's got some speed and some space. Oh, nice move, looking over for a pass. Can't get a shot, but back to the point, shot. Blocked by Fletcher, and he'll go the other way with it now for the Lakers, this top line. Fire it in. They won't go for a line change, and it's Jody Sullivan with it now. Punching it down below the goal line for Molinaro, who can't get it. Sullivan again on the four check. Trying to make something happen here for the Lakers. Nazareth has three, four is now four, fourth in deep, trying to clear the puck. And Nova trying to get rid of it, and he can. Firing it back in behind the net of, of Tilford. Nazareth trying to get it out of the zone. Just able to get it to the red line is Max Novick with the puck, playing alongside Bunko here, and McMillan as well. Max Novick dancing right through for Emerson, three on one. Looking shot, shot. Save and a good one by Tilford, and slow to get up, or still on the ground, I should say, is Max Novick holding his head. Yeah, it looked like that might have been friendly fire. I think Mitch Emerson might have got tangled up and kind of just caught the head of Max Novick. You never want to see that. We have a replay coming up. I believe we'll see on the replay here. Emerson cut in. He had Novick to his left. He decided not to pass, then comes across and just catches Novick right in the head. Yeah, it looked like shoulder to head. Novick slow to get off the ice as he's going to get looked at by the head trainer for the Lakers elites for Simmons. And really just a tough, tough hit. A uh, hit to lay, something that Novick's not expecting, looking in for the rebound, probably he's got his head down looking for that puck. And Molinaro in the same situation. Also, I think if you're Mitch Emerson, I'm surprised he didn't go for that pass for Novick. It was a two on one, Emerson kind of going to his weaker side, couldn't get the shot off. Gillespie's got some time and space, he'll leave it over for McMillan. Good job to get it back over to Mo Gillespie. Back out front, shot, save, rebound, out in front, a scrum, looking for his Tilford, can't get it. It's Gillespie behind the net to Bunka. Hesitates and fluffs on the shot. And a great stick left by, or on Emerson. 
and he couldn't get a trigger on that one. A good job by what looked to be Cody Antonini on that one in the slot as the Lakers try to go the other way with it. And it goes instead to Cole Moore who will fire it back in as Hanson touches it up and leaves it for his teammate Nantanucci who can't play it, but Derek Brown will pick it up as the Golden Flyers go off for a line change. D dancing his way through the ice is Derek Brown, now looking for a pass, and he's lucky to keep that on a stick after Broman helps him out with it, battling in, trying to get it in deep. Can't do it just yet, and instead Nazareth will clear it out with 9.30 to go here. Lakers up 2-1 on goals by Jody Sullivan and Joey Molinaro as it's in depth for DiCarlo. Pass down for Brown. What a save again by Tilford. A goaltending show put on by both ends as Tilford in all alone was was Brown and a great toe save. Yeah, Derek Brown, a guy who had three goals last game. That time almost had it as we look on the replay here, cutting in a nice pass, great to Brown, and then coming across with that right pad. What a save by Tilford. And Derek Brown, a guy whose name we haven't called as much this game, almost had a chance to add his fourth goal in these exhibition matchups. Yeah, and just a beautiful, aggressive save by Tilford. You saw him not only trying to get out to the top of the crease, but using his long reach, his stick, to poke all the way out, trying to make it tough to go before in the back end. A great save getting that, that right leg on the follow through. As Curry with a shot from the point, and the Lakers get it, trying to get it back to Allen, can't do so, was DiCarlo. Back to Allen, shot saved by Tilford, and no rebound here with 9.02 left to go in this second period. Oswego State up two to one. Really this whole third line for Oswego State, it was exact, It was what they wanted out of them last game. Derek Brown, Travis Brown, but this week, they add Alex DeCarlo, DeCarlo to that line, probably trying to get the freshman in on some action, and they've kind of struggled a little bit. This last shift, I think, has been their best shift thus far. Derek Brown almost got a stick out there for the flexion on the Allen shot, but just missed out on it. So we'll see if they can get anything going off the face off, but to me, this has been their best line so far. Yeah, and for this line, you, what you see from them is you want to see that defensive live uh, reliability with a guy like Derek Brown, but also you see that forechecking with Brown, with Broman, excuse me, and DeCarlo, a guy that's kind of got some good skates. He's a guy that makes some mistakes in the defensive zone, especially in that, that last goal against Carlton Place where he missed his man and kind of was caught puck watching. But this is a line that has so much grit, but so much talent too. I mean, Broman's a guy that's one of the best in the Suniac, a great power forward, and Brown the same. Yeah, the power forwards you mentioned, I mean, DeCarlo comes in at 6'1". Travis Broman, six foot two. This is a very big forward line. And also Derek Brown, he's only 5'9", but he's a guy that's going to get in there, like you said. A very grinded out type of line, very gritty third line for us to go state tonight as now they'll face off at center ice. Oh, outfit center ice, I should say, is Xander Pryor taking the face off with Tyson Kirkby. Kirkby wins it back clean for Carter Allen, and the Lakers look to go the other way. A great interception, and now it's Pryor looking to make something happen here. Two on two, shot, save, and good rebound over into the half wall by Hansen. Nash with a little jump in their step on that shift, but Tyler Curry trying to exit the zone for the Lakers here with about 8.30 left to go. Yeah, we've only we've seen Hanson for just a touch over 10 minutes, and he's already seen more action than he saw in that first period against Carlton Place. Most definitely as Nazareth trying to enter the zone. Instead, they'll leave for, for a dump off, and the referee takes a seat, or linesman, I should say, takes a seat, and it's Nazareth looking to go the other way with his Henry McKinney trying to make something happen, but he was one on three, and his team going for a line change. And it's LeBlanc looking for it, and he'll have some chance. He's got Scorpio creeping down. And it said LeBlanc will slow things down, looking for the point man Solo, and he'll get it to him as Solo is coming onto the ice. Back around for Kirkby. Kirkby's got Pelnick, and he'll find him. And they, they kind of rub into each other a little bit, and Nazareth gets the puck. Risky pinch almost by Solo, but he'll get possession with it as Nazareth trying to clear, and instead will call a hand pass on Oswego State here with 7.46 to go. Again, Lakers up 2-0 over the Golden Flyers. Second time we've seen a little bit of friendly fire in this period. Obviously, Mitch Emerson unintentionally runs into Novick, and then Pelnick there comes in off the line change and just runs right into jo Joey Molinaro. So these are just communication issues. Communication is key, especially when there's so many moving pieces on the Oswego State team in these exhibition games, and they've just got to communicate better. You can't have two guys arriving at the puck at the same time. Right, that's something you expect to see as they get more used to be playing with each other as it's a two, two on three here for Nazareth. Drop pass, trying to make his way in was Miller, couldn't do so, but back to the point. Shot blocked by Kirkby, re, or Solo, and the rebound's cleared. Solo falling down as he blocks, looks like he hit him right in his chest, as it's three on three the other way with Colton Fletcher. On to the back end, he'll hesitate and spin around. Heavy hit by him on Falso. But Molinaro picks back up out in front, but instead he'll circle back around for McMillan at center point. Hesitates, fires a shot right into the legs of what looked to be Xander Pryor, so that'll go up and out of behind the net, rather. 
for Novik. Hesitates for left point. Back over to Sullivan. And he'll fire it in no one home, but instead Molinaro will pick it up on the dump-in. Fires it back around for Fletcher, who can't get there. Instead, it was will look to be Mendezun, who will just be able to clear it out and rather that. And now Nazareth looks to go up the other, other way. Sullivan with it now for Novik. Three on two if they can hurry. Fletcher, shot, save, and Molinaro with a beauty, a big rebound for Tilford. Kind of looked like Tilford had a chance to glove that and ice it, but instead took the chance and spit it back out. Justin Miller with it now, going one-on-one -on -one with Novik. Battle along the boards, heavy hit by Novik. But Miller stays on his feet with the puck. Circling it, looking for the point man, but a good job by Bunker to cover up that, that board play. So instead he's forced to fire it down to McMillan. McMillan with it for the Lakers, over to Novik. Looking to clear is Gillespie getting it over to Fletcher. And he'll fire it in as Bunker and Gillespie go up for the forecheck. Bunker with it now behind the net. He's got Allen but can't find him on the point. And instead it's Matt Stanek the other way for the Golden Flyers. Stanek up to Kubara. He had a breakaway earlier in that first period with a great save by Riche as Hansen plays it out to Broman up and up the ice to Bunker. Bunker at the red line will fire it in. And it looks like actually Sean Kuhn is in net instead. I'll have to double check that here as we get a whistle here with 5.37 left to go. Yeah, it looks like Sean Kuhn is now in for Nazareth. I'm not sure when that uh, change occurred, but yeah, it will be Kuhn in net for Nazareth, a guy that was really stellar for them last season in net. And he is now in, in goal for Nazareth. And we'll see if that changes how they attack. Because you want to kind of get some offense going for Nazareth. And maybe if you trust a guy like Kuhn a little bit more, they'll be more likely to push forward on that four check. Right, and Sean Kuhn out of Glen Falls, New York, with Section 2 Goal of the Year back in 2013-14 in high school hockey. Went on to be second team all UCHC last year for this Nazareth Golden Flyers team. So very talented in net. And of course, Michael Tilford, a very capable goaltender as well for this Nazareth team. As Naz Nazareth actually has a power play, it seems. Or rather, the Lakers do, excuse me. As it was James McDonald taking that penalty here as Fletcher tries to set up shop on the power play. Over to Curry. Toes the line back over to Kirkby. Kirkby at the circle. Hesitates for Curry. Curry walking the line once more, looking for a shot, can't find an opening, so he'll leave it to Jody Sullivan at center point. Back down for Fletcher. Now over to Curry for Kirkby in the circle. Back to Curry, shot. Deflect down front and a great stop by Shanley. And he's been all over the ice tonight as Fletcher fires it down low for Molinaro. Back out for Sullivan. And they can't really find anything. It's Fletcher with it now at the circle. Curry calls for it and he'll get it at the point. Loses the handle but gets it over to Kirkby and he'll slow things down once more. Molinaro. Back up to Curry, back down low for Sullivan. And again, Lakers not finding a shot, but Fletcher with it now, rebound, trickles just wide. Looked like Kirby might've got a stick on that one as it's back to Curry. Curry at center point, leaving for Molinaro now. Shot blocked, rebound, cleared by Nazareth. This is just such an uncharacteristic look from Oswego State on the power play. They haven't generated a lot of shots. They've looked a little bit tired, a little bit lackadaisical, as I mentioned earlier. Really not able to get anything going in terms of second and third chances, which is where they thrive. Emerson with his second unit out there. Novik takes a shot, rebound, and a good clear, but not all the way. And it looks like if he can hurry, it was Mitch Culver, excuse me, with a chance. But a good job by Gillespie to pressure him to lose it to Novik. Novik, in the way of the linesman, is able to spin away from Culver. And the Lakers set up shot for Broman. Broman to Novik. Not a great pass, but Broman gets back up. Cuts the slot, or the crease, and a whistle blown a little early as I could still see the puck with five seconds left. There's some pushing and shoving going on here. And look who's right in the middle of that for us. We gotta say it, Travis Broman and Mike Gillespie. And Gillespie did a really great job actually getting back. Nazareth almost had a chance for a short-handed opportunity, but a really good job for Oswego State. Yeah, this power play lulling some people to sleep here. Just not a lot of action, a lot of passing back and forth, and you, you like to see those passes, but get them in the slot. Go across the slot. Don't just sit there along the circles and pass back and forth. You want to get the puck towards the net, fire pucks, but a good thing for this Nazareth, team, Nazareth penalty kill that they've done so well is getting in shooting lanes. A number of times, Novik and Curry have tried to take a shot on the power play, and they haven't been able to do it because there's been aggressive forwards like that right there 
on Sean Hallis. A great job selling out on lying the body on the line. Yeah, and it feels like a broken record saying, you know, Oswego State, they have to get pucks in out. They have to keep shooting, 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 get those second and third opportunities. And that's something that you'll see in the NHL, you see in the NCAA. I mean, even analytically speaking, the more pucks you shoot on the net, the more second and third chance opportunities you can have and the better opportunities to score. And even when Oswego State is getting shots off, they're just not very characteristic of an Oswego State power play unit. Oswego losing the face off. And it looks like Naz Nazareth's got a rush with Ray Fall, so one on two. Cuts to the outside, looking to get on Anthony. Pass out in front, looking for Hallis. He couldn't find it as he took a seat. And the Lakers look to go the other way with it now. Antonucci up to Broman, just staying on side is Emerson. Broman, shot scores! Travis Broman with a beauty, and the Lakers take a 3 0 lead. Yeah, Broman kind of just took things right into his own hands, going coast to coast as we saw him do so many times, as you see on the replay. Gets the pass right up center ice. Nazareth can't get back. Tried to nail that water bottle down. That's up top where Mama hides the cookies. A little toy department. I'm not quite sure what Grant Gallo was doing there. What looked to be Stanek or Gallo. Couldn't quite make out the number, but he was cheating all the way on the other side for, for Emerson. And Broman's the guy with the puck. Go after him. Yeah, you can't let Travis Broman out in space. He's big, he's strong, and he is quick. And really, not even didn't really need a nifty move there. Just use that heavy shot. Got it top shelf, and now Oswego stay up 3-0 late in the second period. It looked like it was Miller trying to beat out the icing, but the refs give it to Oswego State as we're going to face off here with 3.05 left to go in the second period for the Lakers in the Nazareth zone. Of course, when this period expires, Mike Morano and the guys will take you through this second period on the intermission report here on WTOP 10. Looks like it's Colton Fletcher out to take the face off for the Lakers. This top line has looked really good, but quieted down after that explosive first period with Sullivan and Molinaro getting a couple goals. As back out in front, Molinaro pick it up behind the net. Looking back for Sullivan behind the net, he'll pick it back up to look to go the other way with it now. Along the boards, the little boards battle with Brian Miller. Sullivan wins it momentarily as Molinaro's out there to help him out. But instead, Connor Davis will be happy to tie him back up. Throw Julian in there as well, and instead it'll be Kuhn just trying to close up the uh, puck and get a whistle. Yeah, one thing to mention there, as you heard, or may not have heard it, as there's a little scrum once again in front of that, but it was Tyler Antonucci that got credited with the assist there. Obviously, he doesn't count in the official stats, but that would be his first assist of his collegiate career. So good for Antonucci, he's that extra defenseman. You know Coach Gosick wants to see good things from him tonight, and a good job there to find Broman for the goal. Yeah, and he's a guy in Antonucci that has the skill offensively, has that IQ, but hasn't really shown it all that much. You can kind of see him, maybe it took a time, maybe it took a year, his freshman year, to adjust to the speed of the game, not as much the size. He's a pretty big kid sitting in at 5'10", 200 pounds. As it looks like it's slow to get off the ice was Brian Miller for Nazareth as the Lakers win the faceoff momentarily, but instead Nazareth jumps on it to look to go the other way. McDonald or Coons with it, leaving it for Shanley. He'll fire a shot and Hanson with save, and McMillan took a shot up high on what looked like Brophy, and now there's some pushing and shoving. In the mix there is Shanley alongside Novick and Bunko. Yeah, it looks like Novick, Gillespie right in the middle of that one once again. Cedric Hansen though, really good job just gloving that, making sure there's no deflection. He's done a good job so far, and obviously whenever there's action in front of the goaltender, you're going to see the guys come back and, and defend their guy. And that was another point that was made about that, that little skirmish last weekend was, hey, you know, Brown didn't mean to, but he did kind of come up right in front of Devin Levi for Carlton Place. So that's kind of where you see those scrums start. The goaltender, of course, the most protected position on the ice, and you want to see your guys defend him. Oswego State will clear the zone as it's Bunka in on the forecheck, a place he's not too familiar with as a typical defenseman, as Kuhn will cover up the puck here with 2.15 left to go here in the second period. Oswego State leading 3 0. And really, a, I don't want to say a better second period, but less mistakes defensively, I would say, for the Lakers. Less to Excuse me, less penalties, less unnecessary penalties. Yeah, they've done a much better job, like you said, kind of staying in control, getting back to their roots. Maybe a little bit more chippy than you want to see for Oswego State, but of course that's just the name of the game, but you just got to stay disciplined in those situations. And I think they've done a pretty good job staying disciplined. Only a couple penalties, and those penalties are more interference calls, not undisciplined ones in the sense of you're losing your cool, just trying to finish a body check or skate into a guy. As Novik punches it in for will look to be McDonald's for Nazareth, and Casey Kubar will look to go the other way. He's been very active in this game, getting a breakaway earlier in that first period as Novik knocks him down, no call, rightfully so, just a nice stick battle won by Novik. Kubara picks it back up, looking at the point, 
will miss it as it goes all the way for Cole Moore behind the blue line. He'll dump it in here as the Golden Flyers get on side. Yeah, Max Novick, more of an offensive-minded defenseman, but he's done a really good job getting stick ties up, finishing checks like you said. He's done a really good job defensively tonight where guys like Carter Allen and Tyler Curry maybe have struggled a little bit. Hallis hesitates in his own end, gets it over to Cole Moore. Back over to Hallis behind his own net as they look to set something up for the Golden Flyers. Pass dumped wide. Looks like it go for an icing, but instead Novick or Carter Allen actually will pick it up. And a, almost a heavy hit laid on by, from Carter Allen, I should say. And he'll look to get the puck himself. Picks it up momentarily and a heavy hit as he knocks Alberga down to the ice. And gives him another shove here as it's two on two. LeBlanc with Scorpio. Leaves it for Scorpio. He's got Brown with him too. Down for LeBlanc. Cuts around for a wraparound. Can't get a shot off as he's hit hard as well. Back for Kirkby. Shot, save, back into the corner boards. And Kirkby will keep it back up, up, following his own shot. Scorpio with it now. In a ba boards battle, might be another penalty here on Scorpio. As it looked like a, a back check, or a cross check I should say here, with 34 seconds left to go. Yeah, you just can't take that penalty there. Only 34 seconds, like you mentioned, remaining in this second period. And the up, that will be Scorpio heading to the box. And Oswego State once again on the penalty kill. Up three to nothing, so you just gotta kill off these 34 seconds, get back in the locker room, and it will be, as you said, a cross check going against Scorpio. And that's just a, a lazy penalty. It's a, it's a two on two scrum. You're the second or third guy in. You're playing the outside. You don't need to give him a two hander to the back. If you want, wait for the puck, try to battle for the puck, if that, but don't give a soft two hander, because you're gonna get called in every time as a shot, deflect down front, and a good job by Hanson adjusting to make the save. Yeah, really good job. I think the second line for Nazareth has been their strongest with Falso. Brian Miller and Justin Miller. And Brian Miller almost was able to deflect that shot from the point from Owen Kuhn. So Nazareth really is throwing out their best power play unit right now, trying to give Hansen all he can handle at the end of this period. Yeah, it looks like it's Kubara as well out there as the forward on the manning the uh, power, the, the defense, I should say, playing a four forward system is Nazareth as it's Falso. Shot, save, rebound out in front, cover up again. What a save once more. How do you like that for rebound control? Oh my goodness, Cedric Hansen came over, flashed a little bit of leather, and he's getting a big ovation from this crowd. David Richet, the save at the end of the first period, now Cedric Hansen. Look at this replay, Matt. Controls the rebound in front, and a wide open opportunity. Hansen says, I'll take that right back. Gloves that one. Really almost a nonchalant reaction from Hansen on an incredible save. Most certainly, and that's just good positioning on his part. He gets that first save, glove now in position, brings it right back up. And if his glove's not there like it should be, that's a goal going over the pad. Yeah, I think Hanson's done a great job with the glove tonight. You've seen him glove a few so far. And again, another example right there. Sean Jammin, they score. Great fall, so jamming at it. They call, they celebrate a goal, but there's some pushing and shoving as the horn sounds. Yeah, this could take some sorting out. I believe that goal was off in time as the referee's trying to figure things out. Nothing announced quite yet. Yeah, and I couldn't quite make out what happened there. Couldn't even tell if it went in. Falso celebrating as we await the replay. It looked like it went in, but I'm not quite sure how. So if we look here, Falso jamming at it, jams at it, looking for it, and it pops up and over Hansen. Couldn't find the puck, and it looked like it did just pop in there. And I'm not quite sure how that goes in, maybe off his left shoulder. So a nice goal by Falso, a good, dirty, gritty goal. But for the Lakers, where's your defense on that post? Yeah, they weren't there to help out. Hanson did a good job on that first shot, but Falso just kept kind of grinding away at it, slapping away, and some of the Lakers go in the locker room, but I'd have to imagine there has to be some kind of time left on the clock. I don't think that was right at the buzzer. I think the buzzer came a couple seconds after. No, it certainly <laughs> came a couple seconds after. And for the Lakers, they're gonna try to come out here. I saw Hanson skating off right away, took his water bottle and ran for the locker room, trying to sneak out of here without giving him a goal. But for Hansen, again, you can't blame too much on this one. You know, you'd like to see his shoulder get a little bit higher on that post as they sort things out here, but there's someone, someone's gotta be on that post for the Lakers. Yeah, like you said, where was the Lakers defense? It looked like Ray Falso was all by himself alone there and had two, three chances at that one. Obviously, Hansen really didn't have a chance to cover that puck, then found it over his shoulder, like you said. Could have been a little bit tighter in with the shoulders. Hansen back on the ice now. He's having a little conversation with the referee, and we'll see how they sort this all out. And it looks like there might be a goal. There's two seconds left on the clock as we wait for the official decision here from the referee and the linesman. Hansen skating back out to his crease, so it looks like it might be a goal here for Nazareth, which for Hansen, 
really unfortunate because he played a really strong 20 minutes. Yeah, he did, and finally Nazareth able to get one on the board. And as I mentioned, that was the power play unit that Nazareth kind of wanted to throw the kitchen sink. And now it looks like Gillespie's headed to the box. Might have been an after the after the whistle penalty, which you can't have. But again, it's five on five right now, so it might have been a two and two here. Yeah. Also, Scorpio's penalty is still on the board, but he is back on the bench, I believe, so I think they're going to count that as a power play goal. Yeah, it looked like a goal. They're still sorting things out here as they're going to call for the faceoff. Referee skating what seems to be back over to George Roll of Nazareth. Again, the first head coach in Nazareth history, his eighth season as the program opened up in 2012 and 2013, and he was just so important to the Oswego State team, really helping Gosick, and not only when Gosick was an assistant here, but also getting this team kind of back on the map as a elite team in D3 hockey. Yeah, and when Coach Roll came on the staff, you know, Coach Gosick said he could have kept me, he could have let me go. He decided to keep Gosick, and now, of course, Go Coach Gosick has been with this Oswego State program, leading them to that 2007 National Championship as we face off. And the whistle will be blown here. And still on the goal clock, I should, on the uh, scoreboard, it says nothing, it, they just put it up. About to say the scorer's table didn't put up that goal, but it's put up right now. So Rafe Balso getting the first goal for the Nazareth. G Golden Flyers here in their exhibition series. And for the Lakers, you liked what you saw in that second period for the most part. Yeah, just those last really 50 seconds. It started with that Scorpio penalty that he really shouldn't have taken on the cross check. And then it ends with that goal after Hansen did a really good job, obviously. The big glove saved the play before. Falso finds the back of the net. So if you're Nazareth, you're going into the locker room with a lot of momentum. Gillespie's still in the box to start the period, so they'll try to keep peppering those shots at whoever is in goal for the Lakers next period. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break here on Hockey Night in Oswego on WTOP10. When we come back, Mike Morano and the guys will break down that period and the whole bunch of grittiness and, and fighting there. Stay tuned here on Hockey Night in Oswego. So the Media Summit is uh, an opportunity for campus to bring in experts in the field and have them meet with students and network and talk about. And welcome back here to Hockey Night in Oswego, getting to the second intermission. Oswego leads Nazareth by a score of 3-1. to one. We had a very interesting period there. Let's take a look at the goals here. What happened in the second period? Well, let's take a look at the first one, probably the, the most recent one, the Nazareth Golden Flyers. There was a little bit of a chaos behind the net, and it's Ray Falso that goes in for the wraparound. Some confusion on whether or not this one was actually in or not. The call on the ice is a goal, that's what they stick with. And one thing that you might have not caught is Michael Gillespie was slapped with a 10 minute misconduct by the officials, so he won't see action until just ahead of the midpoint of the third period. So Nazareth's able to cut the lead here, but let's go back to Oswego's goal in the second period. Travis Broman, what did you guys see there? So you see Travis Broman get the puck from Tyler Inanachi, and he gets the goal right off top over the shoulder, comes down on the neutral zone recap there, and you see the goal. That gave the lead 3-0. Yeah, the Lakers playing very well in transition. Antonucci with his first collegiate point. Of course, it does not count as this is an exhibition, but that was a beautiful snipe by Broman off the rush. Now we're seeing a lot of things Oswego is doing correct in this period, but we have to keep going on this penalty, uh, the power play here. Had a lot of chances, had a five on three, and was not able to capitalize. What did you guys see on that? Yeah, I was mentioning like if Oswego State kept taking penalties. Yes, their penalty kill was really good, but eventually it might burn them as, as the Nazareth Golden Flyers on that power play goal improved to one and five on the power play. Joey Scorpio though, six penalty minutes on the game. Yeah, right now you're looking at uh, Oswego working the puck around on that five on three opportunity they got early in the second period. The problem with uh, Oswego right now is they're working it around on the outside. 
Nazareth is doing a great job of dropping in, collapsing in in front of their goaltender, not allowing Oswego to get around them and get past his cross ice on the back door or maybe top of the circle for that one-timer opportunity they always look at. Which is why I thought that Oswego State on that five on three was being a lot, way too meth methodical with their decisions. I felt like that they should have taken a couple more shots on it. Even if they weren't necessarily grading one opportunities, you have to get more on net. It seemed like they were just passing it for the sake of trying to open up a lane that wasn't there. Yeah, the more shots you add, the more traffic you in front, the more rebound opportunities you would be able to get when you collapse and crash on the goaltender. And now what does Oswego really need to do here to find the back of the net, especially on these penalties, because this is when you need to capitalize and they're not doing so. But well, we talked about how they like to move it up to the point, move it around in that umbrella structure that they like to use. They will throw it cross ice once they get the Nazareth forward off his, his mark. The, the slot opens up, the player in the slot opens up, and that's allows shots in front, especially when you have traffic in front of this goaltender. Yeah, that's what you saw last week, particularly on that hat trick goal with Derek Brown. He was unmarked for a second and a half. After Zizek tried to feed it to him the first time, he eventually does get it over to Brown. But it doesn't seem to be working against this Nazareth penalty kill, especially on that five on three. They should change up the strategy and take a lot more shots on goal. Yeah, maybe they should look at an overload maybe. Maybe go down low, cycle the puck down low. That will open up your guys up top. They can slide into the slot. Moving over to Nazareth now, getting that goal really late now. But how has their penalty kill been, and how has their goalie play been uh, so far in this period? Well, midway through that second period, we did see Sean Kuhn enter in net for the Nazareth Golden Flyers, and he's held up pretty well so far. He hasn't looked necessarily out of place. But the Nazareth Golden Flyers on the penalty kill, they pretty much held Oswego at bay. They're 0 for 4 on the power place for today. They're playing good in front of Kuhn too. We've always talked about the fact that when you put in a new goaltender, you just have to act like the old one was already there, especially since now Kuhn hasn't let up a goal and they're playing solid in front of him, allowing for that goal at the end of the period. Yeah, a lot of penalty kill going on here and Oswego just kind of needs to capitalize. Nadler's just been doing such a great job on that end, but it just it doesn't really seem to be translating so far in this period. Yeah, no, um, they have to change something up quite frankly because um, 0 for 4 after having so much success, even though it was 1 for 6 last week, is unacceptable if you want to make that deep NCAA run like the team said at the press conference that they want to do. Yeah, moving forward, you're definitely going to have to work on that, especially once you hit stronger opponents in your conference. And especially now, and, and, and Hansen had a, was doing a, great, had a great showing so far and then just kind of had that goal kind of slip up in the back there. Does that affect his play at all? I don't really think it does. Um, he did really well during that second period of play. That last goal, yes, it's a blemish on his record. It goes down as a goal against. But I don't think that he, I think he played extremely well. And moving forward in the next period, I wonder if Steven Kosakowski can repeat last week's performance. Yeah, and that'll we're going to head to a quick break here. Come when we come back, we got our period summary and we got more physicality coming into play here. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Hockey Night in Oswego. Hello and you're welcome and welcome back to Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Morano. Alongside me is Patrick Machado, Zach Case here for your second intermission report as Oswego leads three to one. And let's get into that period summary here. Let's take a look at the numbers. What did you guys see from this uh, second period? Well, the unofficial shots on goal were 21 to eight on the board. Um, you see those numbers right there. Something's probably wrong with that. 21 and eight is the unofficial total on the scoreboard penalty minutes. Again, we talked about the discipline and they were doing a good job of that at the beginning of the period other than the Scorpio minor, but towards the end it kept going up and like I said, it bite them. Yeah, Pat, you talked about Joey Scorpio and how he has multiple penalties, holding penalties, just not disciplined enough and lazy calls that are causing Naz to get opportunities where they scored off that one goal. And like Matt Watling alluded to during the broadcast, that penalty that he took at the end of the period, which eventually led to that power play goal, the cross check, that was a penalty that was needless. All he needed to do was shove him off the puck, gave him a quick two-hander, and yes, it might be a ticky-tacky call, but they're gonna call it every single time. Of course, he wasn't even the first guy into that scrum in the corner. He was second, third guy. That's your job as that as that forward is to come in, tie up a guy, or get the puck out. Not even as the first forward. We talked about this a lot. We talked about it in the other intermission. 
and a lot in last game. The physicality in Oswego has just been kind of being the main game changer here. We see that a lot. What did you guys see from the physicality standpoint? Well, this big hit that you just saw first right off the bat, it's causing a lot of, of gameplay, but that's coming from the four check. You see the defenseman on Oswego hitting people, and you see the scrums after the whistle. That's a big part of the mental standpoint. Naz might be using that to get back in the head of Oswego. And they absolutely should. I mean, they got the, they finally answered Oswego's three straight unanswered goals. And now, as we're going to talk about, Michael Gillespie got a 10 minute misconduct. Oswego is not rolling an extra forward in this game. So now they're down to 11 forwards. So Ed Gosick is gonna have to double shift somebody on his roster. Yeah, he decided to put in Tyler Adonachi as the extra forward, or sorry, excuse me, extra defenseman which that means that's going to cause the forward lines to get jumbled up a little bit here in the third period. Macy lose chemistry that they've been developing over the, the first 40 minutes, and now that's going to that's gonna cause problems. And I mentioned 11 forwards. It's more like 10 and a half because Ryan Bunka, like we mentioned, was on the third defensive pair last week against the Carleton Place Canadians, now moved up to the second line left wing. But he doesn't play forward typically, so... It's going to be interesting to see how Ed Gosick uses this as an opportunity to really have new player combinations, as he's going to have to to avoid major fatigue. Physicality is definitely going to be a big key here, as you guys were talking about. Now, we talked about in the first intermission, Oswego needed to kind of relax on the penalties. They had three in the first now. Do they seem a little more disciplined going in, in the second period? Yeah, besides uh, Joe Scorpio getting a few of those penalties later, especially that one in the end, They've really calmed down on the lazy penalties. Uh, they're being more disciplined in the fact that when they're checking, they're not bringing elbows up at all. They're staying low chest, and uh, that's allowing allowing them to keep ozone pressure and not get in the box, of course. Yeah, that Charlie Pendle, Charlie Pelnick penalty, excuse me, came at 151 of the second period. The next penalty taken by Oswego was that Scorpio one at 1926 nearly 18 minutes later. So I feel like the message has reached most of the team. And yeah, you might get a call here or there, but I think they've adjusted very well from the first. And Ed Guzik is definitely telling them that he's got he's to stop with the penalties, especially if you want to stay in the lead going into the third period. You can't allow Nazareth to take power play opportunities and get back into this game. Now, if you're Nazareth, you're down three to one. What is something they could do here to kind of get some, get, to, get on the scoreboard more and kind of fight back in this game? Well, one of the most cursed goals in hockey are the goals that come in the first and last minutes of a period. It's a huge momentum swing as you were once getting into the locker room 3-0, now all of a sudden it's a two-goal lead. So in ment the mental game, you talked about it earlier, with the hits and the physicality, it also plays it in when you allow goals like that. If you don't score in the first five minutes, you're just pushing the goals back, and then you have to catch up. They come out here in the first three shifts, four shifts, give offensive pressure on the goaltender and Oswego, then you're definitely going to get a goal. If you get that goal, then you're only looking for one, and you have 18 minutes or 15 minutes to get that one goal. Keep up the physicality. Oswego's forward lines, again, are going to be double shifted. So tire them out more than they are already going to be. It's going to last until the midpoint of the third. Let's see if they can take advantage of this moving forward. And we're going to take a quick break here in the Murano Campus Center. Don't go anywhere. Puck drop coming soon. You're watching Hockey Night in Oswego. And welcome back to WTOP 10 Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Murano alongside me, Patrick Machado, Zachary Case. And I feel like one thing that needs to be brought up here again with the physicality standpoint, we saw last week against Carlton plays Travis Broman kind of get into a heated scuffle leading out to kind of a brawl on the ice with the physicality and kind of uh, the tense uh, the heating up here. Can we see something like that brewing again and coming in alive in this game? Personally, I don't think so. Um, the defining characteristic with that Carlton Place Canadian game is by that point, the game was relatively out of reach. Um, not completely out of reach, but it was much more, it was much further than this close game at three to one right now. Every team is gonna have the hot heads, um, the guys that get into those scrums, but I think the game is too important to do stuff like that right now. Yeah, if you're Nazareth, you don't really want to lose momentum throughout the period by going to the box or causing your own players to go in misconducts and offsetting minors. That just takes away from your own momentum and the chemistry, because then you'll have to 
rearranged the lines again. Yeah, again, the misconduct too. Like once the referee calls that first one, that's your standard. If you deviate from that standard, you get into trouble with the coaches, but that is the standard. So I don't think any of these teams want to test the waters um, given how important and how close this game is. Yeah, yeah, of course. And now we're going to shoot it over to the Steve Lee press box where we got Matt Watley and Luke Owens on the call. All right, thank you, Mike. And now looking at this Nazareth team, last year they're scoring 3.11 goals per game. That was pretty good. This year they're struggling, only one goal so far, and they lost a lot of seniors. A lot of that production from last year is not, no longer on this team, Luke. Yeah, you, lunch, you mentioned they lost a lot of seniors. 47.5% of their scoring last year graduated, and the big guy for them, David Pawlowski, who had 15 assists, 10 goals for 25 points, led the team last year. He's gone, so it's all about replacing production if you're Nazareth. Yeah, one of those guys that I think could end up replacing him is Casey Kubara, the junior now last year. Only 17 games played, four goals on 19 shots. He's a guy that's got a lot of talent. He's able to really create a lot of offense. You saw that on his breakaway he had against Riche, and that would have went in had there not been a brick wall in front of him. Yeah, and also the second line for Nazareth is what I look to for points. Ray Falso had that goal to end the second period. Last year he had 11 points, and then Brian Miller, the leading point scorer that returned for Nazareth, had uh, 17 points last year, so that second line of Falso Miller and Justin Miller, I think has been the strongest line for Nazareth, and it's going to be key to them if they want to come back in this one. Right, and this is a team in Nazareth that's used to getting outshot. They're outshot, shot, excuse me, by about thir three per game, but this is a whole different level. I mean, unofficially, just re rolling off the top of my head right now, Oswego State's got much, many more chances, 23 to 14 so far. I mean, that's a ridiculous number. Yeah, and one thing you can't deny is both these teams are just so well coached. And you look at that Nazareth bench, we talked about Coach Roll, and after he left Oswego, he went to D1 Clarkson University, where he was the coach there, took them to two NCAA tournament appearances. And then even their volunteer assistant coach, Craig Dahl, was a guy that spent 24 years as a head coach, 18 years at Division I St. Cloud State, where he took them to the NCAA tournament five times. And not to mention, he was the assistant at St. Cloud in 86 to 87 under, of course, the legendary Team USA coach, Herb Brooks. So these two teams are very well coached. Yeah, and Herb Brooks, one of the best coaches in all of U.S. hockey history in the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame as the puck drops. And he's a guy that really taught Craig a lot in terms of defensive efforts. You know, he's a guy that didn't play with a lot of talent, especially that 1980 team, that U.S. team, where they play a structured game. And that's what you see here with Nazareth. This structured, structured defensive game, wait till the other team makes a mistake, that's when you pounce. You're not dominating the puck by any means, but you're really sitting back and playing well defensively. And that's kind of what we've seen so far from Nazareth, despite giving up three goals. And as it looked like it was Allen taking a seat, no call there, as Jody Sullivan dangles his way through. Back over from Molnaro, shot. Losing is, excuse me, is uh, Kirby rather, back on the ice here as there's a power play incoming for the Lakers once Nazareth touches up. Colton Fletcher with it now behind his own net, waiting to set up shop with McKinney on the forecheck here for Nazareth. Fletcher gets to the red line with some space. Dangles way through. Puckinus skates, excuse me. And Nazareth will touch up here. 19.04 left in this third period, of course. The Lakers going to another power play here as it's Henry McKinney going to the box. Yeah, this is a big power play for us. It hasn't looked all that great tonight. A little bit slow, a little bit sluggish. Haven't gotten a lot of shots to the net. But this is the line if you're Oswego State. Big physicality. You got Broman, Emerson, Brown with Novick and McMillan behind. So this is a very big power play unit. Maybe they can get some bodies in front. And Lakers, that's going way out. Lakers 0 for 3 on the power play. And they wanted a whistle here. And the referee finally called after about five seconds. Ticks off the uh, power play clock here. Yeah, that definitely went up and hit the netting. That was absolutely whistled wide. I thought I was going to make it out. But that netting kind of saved the puck in there. And so Oswego State on the power play and the refs are kind of discussing what happened. They should put some seconds back up on the clock. I don't think they will due to lack of replay, but Novik was signaling, you know, that puck hit the netting, which should result in a faceoff. Yeah, but for the Lakers, you want to play until that whistle sounds, you know, because if, if Nazareth goes up there and somehow jumps on that puck, gets a scoring chance, for the Lakers, yeah, you saw it go up and out of play pretty clearly, but just keep playing, get to that puck. And we'll see how Oswego State lines up now as keeping that same line out there. Coach Kosick hasn't really switched his lines too much on the power play thus far as Derek Brown a little bit late to the party. 
And Oswego State looking for some more opportunities. Trying to get up three goals would be huge for them in this third period. Yeah, and they call it the two-goal lead the most dangerous lead in all of hockey to hold. I think it's more of a one-goal lead. <laughs> You'd think that, yes. Especially with this team like the Lakers where they're very good defensively, able to close up shop as McMillan cutting in here on the power play. Over to Brown behind the net. Back out in front looking for Emerson. Couldn't find him. Good job by what looked like. Couldn't quite make out the number there. It looked like it was uh, Mendezun for Nazareth. Shot by Brown, deflected wide. Brown pick it back up along the half wall near the point. And in a strip of it, and it looks like it's Coons going the other way, but he'll go off as a defenseman for a line change. Yeah, a Nazareth minute. keeping, excuse me, Matt, keeping that four check pressure up now. And just a minute five left on this penalty, and the Lakers really haven't gotten anything going in front of the net. The only shot they had, Emerson kind of blocked the shot from Brown on the last possession for Oswego State. McMillan entering the zone here for Novik. Haven't seen too much McMillan on the power play, but he gets a shot off and it trails behind the net. Trying to stuff it in was Novik behind the goal line, but he'll recoil back to his place where he's more comfortable back at that center point. McMillan looking for it on that far circle with Gillespie off the ice for a 10 minute misconduct. Brown with a shot, or hesitates for Emerson. Shot off the crossbar. My goodness, what a shot. In tight, able to elevate that puck, and now Broman will get at the circle, leaving for Emerson. A lot more movement here. Brown shot, save, rebound, cleared. Yeah. Much more movement on this power play now here, Luke. A lot more movement, a lot a better job getting in front of that. Derek Brown kind of camped up there, almost had an opportunity. Same with Mitch Emerson, so a little bit more of a positive power play unit this time for Oswego State. Kirby carrying it in, leads for Scorpio. Looks for a shot, but will leave it for Curry at center point. Now to Allen as the power play is about to expire. Three, two, one. Shot by LeBlanc. Rebound over for Kirkby. As Nazareth gets their man back, Henry McKinney. Shot. Scores! A lot of traffic in front, but it looks like Tyler Curry gets that one, and the Lakers take a 4-1 lead. Yeah, it was fired from the point. We'll get a look on the replay, but it will be Curry leading the handshake line. Great job. You'll see on the replay by Curry. He fired it in low, looking for a deflection, and it kind of just skipped right through. I'm not sure. If anyone got the stick there, LeBlanc kind of reached out there, but it looks like Curry that led the handshake line there for Oswego State, but a really good job. Not a power play goal, but keeping the puck in the offensive zone and getting a puck to the net. Yeah, it looked like it was Curry. Maybe a Nazareth Golden Flyers skater might have touched that one as that was really low on the ice. Weird bouncing puck goes five hole. And for Sean Kuhn, you really want that one back. That's a tough goal to give up here just after you kill off that power play. Yeah, and right when Nazareth kill. got some momentum, just like that, Oswego State up by three once again. Three on two now. Losing the handle on it is Brian Miller as he takes a seat. Kirkby battling alongside Antonini. Antonini, the defenseman in deep for the Golden Flyers, trying to get something going here. But instead, it's LeBlanc going the other way. LeBlanc has Curry. Gets over to him. Looking for LeBlanc. Pass. Oh, and a good save by Kuhn. Back for point for Brown. Shot. And a glove save there for Sean Kuhn. Great job tracking that one through some bodies. Yeah, great job by Sean Kuhn here to kind of glove it get himself back under control, made a couple of good saves there. And Curry really leading some offensive rushes for Oswego State. He almost had another chance in front of the net, kind of deflected it off the pads of Kuhn. But for Oswego State, that three goal lead, 16 minutes to go. Now we'll see if they kind of hang back, play a little bit more conservatively as this period kind of winds down towards the end. As Oswego State tries to keep it in the zone. And they won't be able to do so. It looks like it's Pryor going the other way. Or rather, that's Kubara. He'll fire things deep. Pelnick picking it up, but he'll circle it back around. Intercepted by James McDonald. Back to the point. Blocked by Pelnick. Skazikowski seeing his first action in net. The sophomore at Liverpool. That's Travis Broman looking to go the other way with it. Pelnick, good job supporting him, but he'll lose the puck, and it's one on one. And Jeff Solo will circle it back, getting over to Brown, and he looks to go the other way as he crosses the red line up and over to Broman. Broman hit hard, but he'll fire it in deep as Sean Kuhn plays it out for his D man in Matt Stanick. Stanek over to up and out, but Molinaro will pick it back up for the Lakers, and McMillan will jump in here on the rush, fire it in from the red line. Colton Fletcher on the forecheck here, battling with Sean Hallis. Molinaro in there as well, and he'll pick it up for the Lakers. Move back around for Fletcher. Fletcher on Hallis. The two fight for it. It looks like Molinaro will pick it back up, and it's caught between him, Stanek, and Hallis. A little board battle here as Nazareth able to just clear. That was Jackson Shanley, unable to change his Nazareth as Novik keeps the pressure going. Looking to make something happen. One hand's the stick trying to get over to him, but he can't do it. 
and instead Nazareth looks to clear. Yeah, you mentioned the tough time Nazareth has had changing lines. Oswego State really makes you earn your line changes. They want to keep you in deep. They want to keep the pressure up. They want to use their endurance to their advantage. And they've really done that tonight. Nazareth has had some real tired bodies down the stretch. Jim Molinaro trying to get that puck in on the floor check as it's McKinney knocking down Scorpio. Or rather Fletcher on that one. Back for Sullivan over to Novick with a hard pass. Good job controlling it was Novick for McMillan. Fires a shot right into the pads of McKinney and that hits the Oswego State Lakers banner. Rise here, ro risen here in the Murano Campus Ice Arena. <laughs> you don't see that every day where the puck was deflected perfectly into that banner. They'll touch up once again for Oswego State. Banner still hanging strong for Oswego State. And it most certainly would have gone up and out of play, or rather at least hitting the netting, causing whistle anyway. But the Lakers will stay here in the offensive zone. As you see Sean Kuhn, the guy, he's played, he's had a solid game, but some of those goals he wants back, as it looks like Nazareth going to the penalty box once more. It's Matt Stanek, the freshman, well, wait, who exactly takes a penalty. Well, wait, what that penalty was. Tyler Curry. Looking, gets it, or Scorpio rather, Fletcher, excuse me, for Curry, and Nazareth will fire it down as Kaz looking to play it out, but instead he'll leave it for Curry. That's a penalty you can't take if you're Nazareth. Already down 4-1, to one. Oswego State just got all momentum back, and now once again going shorthanded, just really stripping away any chance at offense. A good job staying on side was Kirkby, and Molinaro fires a shot into the pads of Antonini. Curry back at the point for Molinaro. And that was a high sticking call for Matt Stanek, the freshman, as Curry walks the line. Shot saved by Kuhn. He was looking for it behind him, but he just squeezed his legs and kept that puck out of the net. Yeah, it looked like Tyson Kirkby almost had a chance for a rebound. I don't think Kuhn knew exactly where that puck was. Kind of got stacked up in his pads, but he's able to cover it. And Oswego State fans giving Kuhn a tough time there as he made the save. Face off back in the Oswego State end. Novik's a guy that really loves to get it going right off the face off. Yeah, him and this line of him and McMillan look really strong in this defensive pair as he fires a shot into the back of what looked to be Owen Coons. For Brown at the half wall. Hesitates over for Novick. Trails back in for Brown at the circle and he mishandles it. Good recovery by Brown as he gets it back to Novick at center point. McMillan creeping in at the circles on the power play shot. Goes wide and Emerson looking to battle for it behind the net. McMillan there as well. But instead it's won by Xander Pryor who can't clear it just yet. But his teammate Owen Coons will fire it down like the ice. 40 seconds to go here in this power play. 13.05 left in this third period as the Lakers lead one, uh, four to one. I think if you're Nazareth, you have to be very happy with their penalty kill unit tonight. Haven't really allowed much of anything. Roman cuts in using that speed. Can't get a handle on it as he falls down. Good no call there, but a good chance for Broman as he turns on the Jets a little bit. Yeah, Broman's just the guy that will go coast to coast whenever you allow him to. And Nazareth that time did a good job kind of getting back. And a good four check by Mitch Culver's but instead the Lakers recoil and they'll try to reset here with about 10 seconds left to go on this power play for Oswego State. Max Novick with it now, punching it in, not far enough, but instead Nazareth will get the clear and that'll just about do it for this Oswego State power play. Another not a lot of job. chances on this one. Another great job by Nazareth killing that off and Oswego State unable to get those second, third opportunities, really unable to get any good high danger scoring opportunities. So you have to be happy with that if you're Nazareth going against one of the best power play units from last year. They have struggled this year, but it still is that same kind of core for Oswego State. Right, as the Nazareth Golden Flyers enter the zone. Curry with it now, firing it up and out of the zone, looking for an icing, and it will be just that. And now talking about Tyler Curry, aside from his goal, I think he's been the best defenseman on the ice right now for this Lakers team. He's been so active offensively, really strong in his own end, and just so prominent scoring offensively, being that, that blue line presence to score. Yeah, Curry's a guy that just has that IQ you want out of a defenseman. He knows when to play up, he knows when to play back, he knows when to fire that shot, and you see him now, He's going over, talking to every player individually before this faceoff, making sure they know where to be, especially a guy like Tyler Antonucci, who maybe hasn't played as much. Carter, Carter Allen kind of giving some words as well. So three defensemen out there on the ice for the Lakers here. We'll see how that plays out. And that's something we've seen in the past with Bunka playing that second line role. As he tries to get a stick on it, unable to do so. And Antonucci races all the way down. It looks like there's four actually out there. Yeah, kind of an interesting... Line here by Ghostic. I'm not sure if they're trying to get changes or maybe just trying something out, but like you said, Bunka is also in there. So that's four defensemen plus the Carlo, who's a big forward. So 
Very big line for Oswego State here. It looks like they might have been caught on some kind of line change or something, but that's really something you don't see every day. Us with Bunga playing forward, you're kind of used to seeing at least three when he's out there. But really shocking to have Antonucci out there as well as Carter Allen playing a little bit out forward, pressuring the D-man there. Antonucci playing along the boards. Looking to get it. Back out in front, just goes wide, and Bunka's got it. He's got a three on two. It's Antonucci, Bunka, and DiCarlo, and Antonucci loses the puck, and it's the other way, three on three. Good job by DiCarlo getting back. Moving back for the point, shot, and it goes in. What a goal by Cole Moore, the fourth skater on the ice for Nazareth, and he goes five hole on Kazakowski. Yeah, great job by Cole Moore there. The sophomore only played two games last year. As we look on the replay, it came up right on the blue line here. A great job cycling back in, and Kozakowski, I don't think, really knew exactly where that puck was coming from. Nazareth back on the board, cuts it once again to a two-goal lead. They haven't got a lot of shots at the net, but when they have, they've been effective. And one thing that's so tough for, for defense to really cover is when you have a three-on-two or even a three-on-three, three, when that fourth guy comes in and he's about 10, 15 feet behind the forward line, it's so hard to attack him because if you go up and you leave your man at that top of that line, that top of that attack, it's really tough to adjust for that when you make that a three on two. So a tough break for the Lakers trying to get bodies back in transition defensively. And here with about 11.25 left to go in this third period, you see some pressure here from Nazareth College. Yeah, these next five minutes really could make or break it for both teams because if Nazareth can cut it to a one goal lead, obviously it's a whole new game. And if they're unable to, Oswego State trying to kind of get back on defense. They haven't done a great job so far. Easy save for Kozakowski on Xander Pryor, and he'll just take a face off here. And an offensive zone draw for Nazareth, and this is a chance for him to really gain some more momentum, have a strong shift, get a bunch of shots fired to Kozakowski. He's a guy that's played about, I would say, three periods of, ho of collegiate hockey in his entire life so far, so he's not necessarily used to seeing a lot of shots here the last couple of years. Yeah, and he struggled from that shot from the point that came last, uh, that led to the Nazareth goal, so we'll see maybe if he can get his vision in a better spot, because that was a, not the hardest save to make in the world, but he looked like he just couldn't see it. Yeah, a good steal here for Nazareth, and a great job by So lot laying out to block the pass coming from Alberga. Solo with it now, looking over for LeBlanc, he'll get it out, over to Kirby. Kirby trying to chip it up and over, and he'll get it there. Scorpio there on the four check as well a little bit, and a good job by LeBlanc to pick it up as Pelnick crossing the blue line to get the rush going for the Lakers. He'll jump it up and all the way over into the corner boards as it's Scorpio trying to battle for it now with Mendezoom. Or rather, that's Antonini. Kirkby with it now, losing it to Frojulin. Frojulin trying to make something happen here, unable to do so, at least momentarily trying to escape the zone. He'll get up to McKinney, the forward, and Scorpio intercepts. Now it's Kirkby behind the net. He's got LeBlanc in front of the net and goes for a wraparound and a good save by Sean Kuhn. Yeah, it looked like McMillan maybe could have snuck down for a better shot there, but Kirkby instead goes for that wraparound. A good job by Kuhn to stay honest, going post to post, keeping his head on a swivel. Saw that wraparound coming. Good job by Kuhn because you don't want to allow that fifth goal. So good job getting over, making the save on Kirkby. But if you're Oswego State, you need to get a little bit more pressure out in front of the net because Kirkby wanted to pass it. It's just no one was home for Oswego State. McMillan here at center point. Hesitates and gets it back over to Novik, who mishandles the puck, and he'll just dump it in for Emerson. Emerson losing the puck momentarily as Novik picks it back up for Jody Sullivan. Sullivan at the point now as McMillan creeps in. Novik only man back at point. McMillan in there as well, and McMillan's got it back, and he does so. Odd man rushed the other way, four on three for Nazareth. As it's Connor Davis ringing around the boards. Novik a good job trying to bat it away, and instead it's Bunker with it now. Bunka looks to try to get into the zone, unable to do so, at least momentarily, as it's punched all the way in on the second effort as Owen Coons goes back to recoil behind his own net. Long stretch pass over for Kubara, and he stood up hard. Actually, that's not Kubara, that's Dick Connor Davies, or Davis, rather. Great and job by Carter Allen there. We talked about who's going to be the leader tonight. Carter Allen, we haven't heard a lot from him, but that time a really solid check, got the crowd back into it. Maybe could be a jolt of energy for this Oswego State offense. It's looked a little bit like they've been stuck in that neutral zone. Yeah, just a little bit. And for a defenseman, you don't want to be as seen or as known, being that, being that your, your goal is ultimately to protect the net as Nazareth goes po uh, blue line to blue line, fires a shot in, and it's Jackson Shanley with it now. Back around to the point for Stanek. Shot, save, and a good one 
as it looked like it was James McDonald getting a tip on it. That was a really good job by Oswego State, clearing out, kind of letting Kozakowski see that shot. So he was able to see it clearly, came in, and clearly made the save. So good job by Oswego State's defense helping out their young goaltender. And a much better job. And still, Nazareth seems to be coming out a lot stronger here in the last couple of shifts here in this third period. Yeah, they have. And you know, maybe they see Kazakowski in goal and say this is a guy that hasn't played as much. See if we can pepper as many shots as possible. And also, just playing with that desperation, only 8.30 remaining for them to score two goals. Definitely a bit more of a jump in their step as Broman cuts wide and uh, easy save for Sean Kuhn as it's right in the center of his uh, chest, yeah. the nameplate there. And that's a player around that third line. DiCarlo is coming down that left wing. If he was just maybe a step faster, Broman probably could have found him for maybe a potential goal. But Broman takes matters into his own hand once again as he discusses it over with his lines mate. And for Broman, do you want to see him keep taking shots from a kind of a poor angle on that far wall or try to get cut in towards the slot looking for rebounds? He's really just one-on-one -on -one there. Yeah, he could have cut in. Also might have had to Carl off. To Carl, like I said, was just a step faster or left maybe a second earlier. To Carl with it now, back for Solo at right point. Fires a shot, just goes wide, looked like it was blocked in front. Antonini with it, leaves it for Coons. Back up and over to Justin Miller trying to escape. Only able to do so is Pelnick using his large frame, and he'll get hit, and there's a penalty coming up. Pelnick does a good job keeping the puck in front of him, and then he's interfered with, so it'll be a power play for the Lakers here. 8.05 left to go in the game. Oswego stayed up 4-2. Yeah, Pelnick used all of his 6-5 frame there to knock that puck down. And then just really a penalty you can't take. And that's Brian Miller, one of the veteran guys, one of the seniors on this team. You just can't make that hit. That's a hit that's not necessary. And it really didn't impact the game all that much. So you really just can't make that play. And once again, it was Oswego State that started off kind of with those chippy little penalties. But now it's been the Golden Flyers that have kind of suffered in that area. And it almost looked like he was trying to get, just follow through with the puck, follow the puck, but instead Pelnick gets in his way, knocks Pelnick down, he's off balance, and there's a shot here by Fletcher, and a heavy rebound moved over towards the boards as Molinaro alongside Jody Sullivan, and they win that one out to Kirkby at the half wall. Back for Curriott, who trickles and walks the line to center point. Back over to, to Carlo, or Fletcher, excuse me. One-timer, Kirkby misses wide. It'll go the length of the ice for an icing here with about a minute 30 to go on the power play. That's a shot you really don't want if you're Tyson Kirkby. I mean, yeah, it was an okay angle, but no traffic in front of that for Oswego State. And when it goes wide, it goes all the way down, and Oswego State has to kind of recycle and start up again. And at the very least, you got hit the net there as Molinaro gets it over to Curry at center point. Holds. Molinaro shot. Goes wide once more. And another clear for Nazareth as they'll look to try to get a line change. And for the Lakers, you've got to hit the net. Yeah, Coach Gosa can't be happy with that. Back-to-back -back shots are just too hard. Go off the end boards, kick out. Oswego State has to restart the penalty now. Only a minute left. And those are just shots that you don't want if you're Oswego State. You want to get traffic. You want to get those passes in tight that they've been so effective on. On five on fives, just that hasn't worked on the power play so far. Travis Roman can't corral it. And another ice in here, or another clear, I should say, for the Golden Flyers as they, as they only got about 35 seconds left to kill off of this penalty kill as Max Novick crossing the blue line with some speed, trying to get into the Nazareth end. Nice move there as he holds up along half wall, and he loses it, and now it's a chance for James McDonald. Brown struggling and chasing him, and a great job by Brown on the forecheck, or back check, excuse me. And Brown back the other way here, a full 200 foot game you see from him, even though he'll get a hat trick every once in a while like we saw last week, as this Novick creeps in, looks for Broman, back out, shot! and just goes wide, wide open net for Emerson, but he couldn't get it as Molinaro found him. Back out in front for Broman, excuse me. Broman again with another chance as Nazareth looks to clear, and it's Jackson Shanley, two on three. Cuts down behind the net as Nazareth goes off for a change. Novick trying to knock the puck off him, he'll get it, Carter Allen. And he'll evade a hit and actually accept that one pretty cleanly. LeBlanc trying to knock the puck off of Fall, so can't do it. Shot, blocked, rebound, another one, and a good save by Kozakowski. Fall, so with it out. Circles to the slot, backhand, save, and a tricky save by Koz and Kozakowski, and a good job gobbling up that rebound. That was a really hard shot from Ray Fall, so he kind of had to come back to the backhand, stayed true, and it's actually a pretty hard shot. If he was able to get that over to his forehand, he is a left-handed shooter, so he couldn't kind of get it over, but that could have been a better shot, but even a hard shot on the backhand. And even those backhand shots, they're not as powerful, they're not as hard but they're so hard to read the, the toe of the stick and where the puck is going. When you see the backhand, you really can't find where it's going for, as a goaltender. So you kind of 
you lose that the heaviness of the shot as Kozkowski covers the puck once more. You lose that that power, but you get that deceptiveness where you don't know where it's going. Yeah, and that's tough. I mean, Steven Kozkowski actually is the biggest Oswego State goaltender at six foot three, and he did a really good job just kind of staying true there. He's, the puck kind of took, like you said, when it goes off the toe that stick, it might take a weird bounce, but he stayed in there, used his full body to make the save. Nazareth trying to keep it in, but LeBlanc does a good job trying to get rid of it. And Carter Allen fighting for it now, and a good job on the forecheck was Justin Miller, but the Lakers look to go the other way with it. They've got some numbers that they can hurry. Looking over for Scorpio, and a tripping call on LeBlanc here as he knocked down, can't quite make out the number, but it looks to be Sean Hallis. So Oswego State will go to the penalty kill here, 509 left in the third period, and a tough break once more for the Lakers, and another penalty you really don't want to commit. Yeah, and we'll see exactly how, and I think they're actually gonna get Nazareth for the penalty, Matt, because I believe it was Nazareth that touched the puck last, and yep, it is going to be, I believe it was a tripping call. It's gonna be going against Brian Miller, once again a veteran making a tough play. You see on the replay here, trying to cut in there, and then right there, Miller gets kind of caught in the there skates, is, yep. and there he is in the box. And I kind of saw on the, on the offside, it looked like Scorpio falls down with another defender here for the Golden Flyers. As the Lakers step shop once more, looking for a cross ice pass to Brown. Instead, it'll go up and over the, and out of play. And for the Lakers, your power play, you've got one power play goal, but still, it hasn't looked great. Or rather, you don't have any, I should say. You've got a shorthanded goal from Molinaro earlier in that first period, but this power play just does not look good. It just doesn't look like the Oswego State power play you're used to seeing. There haven't been a lot of bodies in front. They haven't really been using behind the net to their advantage. That's where they're very effective. When they get guys like Molinaro, when they get guys like Brown down behind the net, those quick guys to get it back up to the point. Shot goes wide all the way out to Brown at the half wall. Looking for a pass, and a good job by Nazareth staying a little bit aggressive at getting those passing lanes. Novick, overshot, goes wide, and Derek Brown can't keep it in. As Colton Fletcher's shot goes up and behind the net for Oswego State, as Kozakowski leaves it for Max Novick. Third time we've seen that, Matt, where that, that slap shot hits the board. Derek Brown unable to keep it in. Now, Sweet State once again has to reset a power play unit that hasn't looked cohesive, so all these resets really don't help. Brown trying to enter the zone, gets it on the second try, only momentarily, and Emerson is able to steal it for Broman. A little move through the legs. Slowing it down is Fletcher as he waits, and they've got to start moving some bodies. You can't just sit there with a Brown shot. Just goes wide, looked at his deflection, bounced out to Fletcher. Over to Novick with it now. Creeps in now over to Fletcher at the circle. Hesitates, circles back around. A great defensive effort by Shanley trying to knock the puck off of Fletcher, but instead he'll move it over to Novick. Hesitates, Fletcher shot, save, rebound. Momentarily cleared, and he'll go the length of the ice here for Nazareth. So Oswego State getting a couple shots off, but still not a great look. And one guy that's done a really great job, I think, on the power play unit has been Mitch Emerson. You know, he's standing bigger, one of those bigger forwards at six foot one. He's done a good job kind of drifting line to line going in front of that, trying to create some traffic. He just hasn't really gotten a lot of shots thrown his way for a chance for deflections. And Tyler Curry can't keep that one in, so he'll go back to retreat. About 20 seconds left to go on this power play. Oswego State leads 4-2 to with about 327 left to go here in this third period. Oswego State, of course, this is their second exhibition game with their first coming last weekend in a 9-1 victory over Colton Place. But for Nazareth, they look a little slower because this is their first game they played in quite some time, last game came over in the spring of last year. As Molinaro can't accept the pass, so instead it's Tyler Curry as the power play ends, and Nazareth's got some lines, he got some rush. Pryor with it, back over shot, scores! Tic-tac-toe, and Brian Miller cuts the lead to one. Yeah, great job by Brian Miller. He came out of the box flying. Nazareth gets the timely turnover, and we'll see on the replay. Like you said, that was a very nice Tic-tac-toe, and Brian Miller was the guy that hammered it home. Really nothing Steven Kozakowski would do here, as you see, moving up the wing, finds Brian Miller, and a good job getting past Kozakowski. And it looked like, I couldn't make out the number entirely, it looked like it was DiCarlo or Fletcher, that third forward up at the top of the screen, trying to chase down the, the, end of, the eventual goal scorer in Brian Miller, and he's you've gotta be quicker on that body. Just like you're that. you're leaving the back door wide open, and an easy tap in. Yeah, and just like that, a one goal game, which is exactly where you don't want to be if you're Oswego State. And you just have to watch the guys out of the box. You know they're looking for that breakaway opportunity. And like you said, the forward unable to get back to make a play on the puck. Board battle here along the Oswego State bench. Cleared back and over to Justin Miller. Miller hesitates, loses it for momentarily. 
and just squirts out of play as they'll reset with Antonini back at his own blue line. Antonini gets it up to Connor Davis, will punch it in, but Pelnick will pick it back up. Back over for LeBlanc, hit hard, but able to clear the zone as Solo on the second effort, only momentarily, however, as Nazar looks to enter the zone. Fancy play here by, it looks like, Stanek, or rather Moore, but he can't make much happen here as Emerson fires it in. And as State goes for a line change. Yeah, Nazareth has done a really good job. They've really grabbed the momentum here in this third period. And now with a minute 55, we'll see how long they wait to pull their goaltender, Sean Kuhn. Right, and George Roll, one of those more veteran coaches, not much, you know, more disciplined. He might look to just pull him around a minute, a minute 30. Once Oswego, once Nazareth tries to get into the zone, but instead DiCarlo will fire it up and in and look for Broman to go to work here on the forecheck. Can't quite get there, but a good keep by Carter Allen as time Clicks away, shot, save, rebound, rather blocked as Brown trying to get a shot. As Oswego State doing a good job here, trying to kill clock. There's about a minute 30 left to go. Yeah, Derek Brown almost had an opportunity for a goal there, and this unit just hasn't been as cohesive as it was in that first game, adding to Carlo to that third line. Tyler Curry cuts in from the point, and someone's got to get back for him as he's one of the defend defensemen on this team, and a good job for the Lakers getting back here with about a minute 10 to go, and they'll pull Coon here for Nazareth. Cutting in is McDonald, and he'll punch it in. Carter Allen picks up on his own net, and a heavy forecheck here as you see the intensity rising and the determination to get one back here for Nazareth. That desperation you talked about earlier on, Luke, really showing on full force here as Nazareth looking for a pass out front and a good job by Curry to block that one and fire it along the walls to try to get out of the zone. Up to so Sullivan, can't hit the blue, red line, but he's gonna dump it anyway. And just missing the net. No ice, however, as it slowed up just enough. And Colton Fletcher out, shot, blocked by Hallis. A good job by him playing in goal a little bit with the empty net. Hallis yep. gets it over to Brian Miller. Not much speed there. So instead, he'll leave it up and over. And the Lakers were able to clear here with about 20 seconds left to go. Oswego State's got a 1 0 lead here. And time is ticking away. One last rush for Nazareth as they cut to the ice, and a mini breakaway here for a rush, back over, and no one can get a stick on it. A great pass by Kubara, as Molinaro touches the puck, and there might be either a penalty and a hook there. That might have caught, that might have been an issue with it. Xander Pryor unable to get a stick on it, might have had a hooking call against him. Wow, Nazareth had a great opportunity there in front of the net, and Ray Falso just could not get his stick on it. You see him kind of skating back to the bench, kind of hanging his head a little bit, because he knew he could have had that equalizer. And Oswego State looks like if they can survive this face-off, that might be it. We'll see if, I think Coach Roll might want a timeout here. You might want to discuss this. I mean, you know, it's it's unlikely, but you still have at least .9 seconds to work with. And yeah, with that, you talk about taking penalties and taking smart penalties. As, you, as I saw Jody Sullivan receive a fist bump from Cedric Hansen, that's a great penalty to take by Jody Sullivan. You see, it's a, th it's a three on one. You're the back checker. Get that stick in there, hook up. Otherwise, it's a sure goal as long as they can get their stick down. And a really great effort by him. Great hockey IQ as we're putting on about one second left on the clock. Because if he doesn't take that penalty, it's a goal. Now, just win a faceoff and the game's over. Yeah, and you saw his goaltender, Steven Kozakowski, skate over, give, give Jody Sullivan a little, a little fist bump. Like you said, you know, if you're a Suga State, you just have to be smart with those penalties. Sullivan gets the penalty, but obviously not a breakaway, not going to result in a penalty shot. So like you said, a really smart play by Sullivan, and if you're Nazareth now, you look and you say, you know, we have a six on four opportunity with one second, don't or 1.5 now rather, so we'll see what do you think they're gonna draw up here. And I think if you're Nazareth, you've gotta look to do something right off the face off. Either you have enough time to win it back to a guy probably in that in that circle, maybe three or four feet out, and just take a one-timer, see what happens. You've got Kozakowski in net, and for him, he's gotta play aggressive, but also watch in case they're gonna stack up their forwards so that you push the puck up rather than winning it back and try to rush four or five guys there for a rebound. Interesting, it's gonna be Emerson, Scorpio, Allen, and McMillan. That's gonna be the four that Coach Gosick sends out. So trying to kind of crowd in front of that net block any type of shot that could come off the faceoff. Yep. And look for Culver, who's taking the faceoff, to win it back to either Falso or what looked like Antonini. And actually, they might push it forward and try to get a little scrum here. As we will say, winning the faceoff, and the whistle will sound as the Lakers win their second exhibition contest by a score of four to three. Yeah, I don't think that was the game that Coach Gosick really envisioned 
especially going up 4-1 to in the third period. They come away with a 4-3 to victory. You know, some positives to draw, but also a few things to work on before opening conference play next week. At the same time, you see it and you say, the defense has got to be a little bit better. That team defense that we talk about, you can't let your goaltender hang out to dry. We talk about Devin McDonald from Geneseo, who graduated after the, this May. His defense was all world, incredible. The great back check, a really excellent job. But for the Lakers, you can't get those men unmarked on those odd man rushes. You've got to do a better job cleaning up the garbage in front of the crease and not losing your man and not get caught puck watching. Yeah, and one thing that Oswego State, I mean, their goaltenders kind of bailed them out a couple times. Riche on the breakaway. Cedric Hansen made a couple of big saves on the stretch. So, you know, goaltending, they allow three goals combined, but overall did a really good job keeping Oswego State in the game, especially when some of the defense for Oswego State, like you said, was a little bit spotty. And you kind of expect this defense for the Lakers. They'll figure it out. They'll get better as the season progresses. But to see guys like Hansen and guys like Riche make those great, amazing saves, you saw Riche on the breakaway against Kubar in that first period. He doesn't make that save last year, I don't think. And when you get those kind of saves, there's so much confidence and a boost of energy on the ice. You saw it shifts later with the Lakers really dominating some play. And then that second period with Hansen, you saw him make a beautiful stop with the glove in tight, unable to stop one in that second period late at the end. But again, you need your you need your defense to ban that post on the power play on the penalty kill. Yeah, and that goal that Kazakowski let up the first one. Maybe you say you know you think Riche or Hansen is able to get a glove on that. But again, just a tough shot from the point. Oswego State doesn't get back on defense. They come away with a four to three win. They win both their exhibition games and look forward to playing against Cortland next Friday night. And of course, the, Cortland will be here on November first, and really a game to look forward to for the Lakers to try to not call an exhibition, but to continue to figure things out. This is a team that needs to bank every Suniac point to reach their goal of ultimately winning the Suniac. And that's a great start where you have a team that you can make mistakes against and still cover up for them. But at the same time, you've got to make sure you're winning those, those games. Yeah, and we'll see if Oswego State can get it done against Portland, one of those weaker Suniac opponents. So Oswego State trying to keep it rolling next Friday night. Right, we'll have coverage of that starting at 6.30. But right now, after this quick break, Mike Morano and the guys will have the post-game report here on WTOP 10. Hello and welcome back to the Murano Campus Center here in Hockey Night in Oswego. I'm Michael Murano alongside me, Patrick Machado and Zachary Case. A little bit chippy at the end there, it turned to a little bit of a nail biter, but Oswego got the job done here in a win 4-3 over Nazareth. Let's take a look at the goal summary here. We had a couple of goals here. Tyler Curry starting it off for the Lakers. Yeah, Curry opening up the scoring for the Lakers. It wasn't officially a power play goal, but the power play pressure keeping them hemmed in their own zone. Matt Watling alluded to it. In the Murano Campus Center, the long change is in the first and the third. That means you have to skate all the way to the center line to get a change in. They weren't able to do so. Tyler, penalty killers were out there, and they were able to convert on that opportunity. Now we're going to look at the Nazareth goals coming up on the board. Uh, we're going to go with Cole Moore. He gets a shot right from the top of the point. That goes five hole past Kautikowski, and that's assist from Ray Flauso too. That's one goal, one assist today. And that's his first collegiate goal um, to Cole Moore. Of course, again, none of these statistics actually count, so he'll have to re-earn his first official goal again. And then on the second goal, it's a three-on-two break. It's a tic-tac-toe play across to Brian Miller. Brian Miller came right out of the box, and he's going to throw a pass to the defender over on the backdoor pass. And there, and That's goal. Yeah, with that first goal, Maybe you can put a little blame on Kozakowski. He was unsure if he actually saw it, but for that goal, not on Kozakowski at all. He, the Oswego defense left him out to dry there. Tic-tac-toe, there's nothing that he could do about that. Kozakowski definitely didn't have as good of a game as he did last week, so let's brush upon the goalie situation again here. Hanson and Riche, been a little bit of a battle of who's going to get that first nod. How did they look in this game? Um, I'd honestly say that both of them were pretty on par with each other. Um, Hansen's goal, um, like we mentioned, kind of a blemish to his record, but I don't think it was entirely his fault. You could say Roche had uh, like less opportunities for say in the first period, but Hansen really held his own until that last goal, of course. And that's what happened in the first week too. Roche didn't see many opportunities. I think he only saw three and four shots on goal. Now, if you're Ed Gosick go going into this, uh, yeah, if you're Ed Gosick going into this. Who are you going to go with here, Riche or Hansen? Uh, going into this, uh, not a lot of time to kind of figure this out. You see, I don't know. David Riche, he has the benefit of being the starter for the last two years for Oswego State. However, like we mentioned, he didn't receive 
much action, and there isn't much time to prepare him for the most important game of the year, which is Plattsburgh, uh, at least in the early going of the season. You only have that one game against Cortland. Typically, that's when you would want to put in your number two goaltender, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Hanson here. He's really showed a lot in that, in that second period when he got those 20 minutes in, but that last goal wasn't really his fault. It was an odd, odd rush from behind the net on the goal line. And uh, I would say he didn't get a lot of time last season. He can pick it up, definitely. And I think this guy, Ed Guzik, Guzik, excuse me, is definitely going to have to see the hot hands like we talked about in the first intermission. So do you rest Reese Shea for Plattsburgh or let, hand, or let him get into a groove? Well, Interesting we, decision for the head coach. Absolutely here. And now we got to, the Lakers have a win now. Winning the last two games in exhibition, I understand these games don't count. But how important is it to get these two wins here going into Suniak play? It's hugely important. And like we take a look here at the game summary, uh, too, to kind of help us out a little bit. Yeah, like we mentioned, they play Cortland next week. Matt said this is a team, historically, you can afford to make mistakes against. As we take a look at the period summary, 35 shots in favor of 21 to the Nazareth Golden Flyers. Penalty minutes up there. I'd take a two away from that because Jody Sullivan's penalty at the end of that period is the smartest penalty you could ever take. His hockey IQ there to take that hooking call really allowed Oswego to get out of that game. If that, if he didn't take that hooking or the back check at all to get back into that play, that would sure have been a goal and we would have been an OT. Yeah, just showing why he's on that first line. Senior, left wing, and he shows why he's trusted to be in that position. And we talked about Ed Gosick trying to get his team a little more disciplined as the game went on. Do you think they did a good job as uh, gradually uh, across this game? I think they did. Taking a look at the penalty summary, Joey Scorpio, that is something that they have to work to in practice. I feel like he was one of the outliers today in terms of discipline, but after the first period, I feel like they really tightened up. Especially in the third, we didn't even see an undisciplined or lazy call or, or penalty for say against Oswego at all. They really kept it up, especially after the smart one. And that'll do it for us here at the Murano Ice Hockey Center. I'm Michael Murano alongside me, Patrick Machado, Zachary Case. Oswego gets the win here by a score of four to three. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in to WTOP 10 and have a good night.